I like this. Thank you. Do me a favor. When was the last time I saw you? I think 19. Oh. It was a 19. <laughs> I think I was 19. <laughs> um, could you uh, make sure you keep everything on the brown? Either on the what brown mean, blanket or dirty? on the tray. Oh, no, I, thought I'm saying, saying, I thought you were saying don't be dirty. Um, no. Well, yes, in a way, but literally. <laughs> so when we say this story, don't. We, I, we probably can't say name right i'll just say my i name. don't even know if i want to tell the story we have to we don't have to why there's some variables in it that don't hold up very well these days i don't want to talk about you being negative well that's the whole thing that's the whole otherwise what's the story we I just said hi <laughs> i don't know if i want to tell the story really at some point we're gonna have you back let them let them meet you and look at <laughs> oh what's the story what's the story we gotta have andy back i mean it's been what 10 years Today. Can I put it? Really? No. Oh. Uh, actually, was I know. It Saturday? No. <laughs> and, uh, no, the dates change days, Andy. Uh, so I know what it was. It was uh, 20, it was December 2011. Who are you, Mary Lou Henner? You know. Mary she, Lou Henner. She has that, like, she does, I know, I know. She does every day. <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I do know that, but only because you said Mary Lou Henner. If, if I said, I hit, I hit it out of the park like 500 feet, you'd be like, what are you, Mary Lou Henner? I would have thought, what is that, a big baseball player? <laughs> What, do I get headphones? Uh, yeah. Can't just anywhere really, but what are those? Is, oh, is this? I'm not losing. The it's, trays are you guys. The trays and the brown. Is that because it's sponsored by Beats, or I can't use those? No, they take the Beats. I just clean them, so I oh. put them there. Uh, they plug into the wire on the ground. Can I get a drink or something, or like a water? What were you gonna say? I'm sober, Jan. Good call. Dry January. And now, I'm, does that I'm, just mean booze or like and I'm, sugar, I'm like crack? Cool. Is that Will Smith from Pursuit of Happiness? Oh wait, no, he only had one kid, huh? Who the the book? Oh, that. Who's the um? Who's the statue of? Or would you call that a doll? No, it's because it, a figurine. What is that? A figurine family? Are those those um? What are those little what do you houses? Want, uh, Andy, a water? <laughs> do you have a diet coke or something? Something with caffeine? I have a diet coke that I moved with me from last year. Ugh. Yeah. Well, I'm not a caffeine guy, but I had some today, and you kind of get that little. You get that little. I'm drinking a Zoa right now, the Rock's Energy Drink. Oh, that's hardcore. Yeah, it's a there's a lot in it too, but it's delicious. It makes your balls bigger. It makes you think better. It makes the air taste better. What is it called? This podcast is brought to you by Athletic Greens, who is giving you a free one year supply of immune supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. It's okay, but and no, it's fine. But they know. They know. No, <laughs> you know that they know you meant purchase. <laughs> Visit athleticgreens.com slash Tyso for a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first Perthith. That's athleticgreens.com slash Tyso. This episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. Listeners get 10% off their first month by visiting BetterHelp, B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P.com slash Tyso. Hey. Hey, Dad, did you know if you download the FanDuel Sportsbook app and use code TYSO and pick your conference championship team before kickoff, that you have a chance to win $150 off a $5 bet using promo code TYSO when signing up and restrictions apply? Yes, I do know that. All right. Well, we'll hear more about it in a little bit. Look, I never want to judge anyone that shows love and affection towards anything because I think that's beautiful. But I will say that I find it very baffling how you could show any affection to a hairless cat. I'm allergic to cats. Can you be allergic to those cats? I think if you're allergic to, to house cats, you're allergic to tigers. Don't tell that to Penn and Teller. We'll be right back. <laughs> Theme music. <laughs> <laughs> Great opening. 
Oh yeah! Oh, yeah. yeah. It's like one of those stoner space launch movies where like. Have you guys seen that meme of of uh, Celine Dion going? Ooh, yeah. So no, but send it to me. And yeah. the caption is, uh, when you take a bite of a pizza when it's still too hot. <laughs> That's so funny. Celine Dion is probably one of the most memeable acts of all time. I've been saying that since like February. Well, just she's very animated on stage. There's that one uh, video of that one girl right. that pulls up to her. <laughs> I thought Andy was going to follow up with some extra Yes, Yes, he, is, he is. This is how Andy does it. Oh, wow. Andy, Andy does what musicians are supposed to do, where they take somebody else's stuff, but they make it their own. I love that. I thought well, you were the Celine Dion. No, no, I wasn't cutting you off. The Celine Dion thing. Did you see the video? It's like a video of like some girl comes up to her and she's walking. She goes, Celine, Celine, listen to me, listen to me. And she's like, all right, I'll give you two seconds. Yeah, I've seen Oh, she's it. in the car. And then the girl starts singing and she just rolls her window up. And it's no, because it's no, it is no good. It's no good. Andy. Oh, that's awesome. Andy. Andy, you want me to get you an armrest? Mm. Boy, that sounded like a real pervy thing. My to brain me. is already. Con- you want me to get you an armrest? That's some, that's like the adult version of like, hey, kid, get in my van. Adam, you and I have done this so many times that we start podcasts as if somebody went to it forty minutes in. Yeah, you know, I think we got to meet Andy. Great, meet Andy, dude. That's the name. But of that's your how sick. you're supposed to do it. You go in, then you, yeah, the, the teaser. Yeah, but we've then, been in. <laughs> we've been, you know, yeah, Andy, five, five minute teaser. Andy, if you had a sitcom other than Meet Andy, which is a great title, what would you title it? That's so Andy. That's so Andy. That's so Andy to say that title, too. <laughs> it really is. Hi, I'm Andy. Andy, um, do, uh, do us a little favor. Look in the camera. <laughs> he just goes, All right. Tell us things. Uh, tell us uh, something that... Uh, Your favorite food. I got this. Your favorite food. Dude, you know what the worst thing about that shit is? No, wait. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, no, I go the whole on. thing. The whole thing. <laughs> it's like he, he says that. He's like, this is the most... Unbelievable questionnaire from Shudong Long, you know, whatever. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Littman. Right. But then he, he, he fucking pumps it so much where he's like, this is the most unbelievable questionnaire. And then he goes, what's your favorite word? And you're like, what? This is fucking stupid. Yeah, oh, I think, Lipton. I think he's doing that on purpose. Oh, I thought he's, is yeah, he joking about yeah, it? He's a funny guy. No. Uh, that, why he, would he, he likes comedy. Why would he give that guy props to that French dude? He's also dead. Yeah, he is. Moment of silence. What did he die of? He was old, though. He's like 90. He was a big guy. He had like... I never saw him get up from that chair, so I'm not Are you watching con- him a lot? Or were you only seeing him on things that he was recorded when he was supposed to film in the chair? That. So I don't know how he was... I don't know if he slept in a bed. Oh, he did. To me, Lipton was always in the chair. I know for a fact he did, and I happen to know that he slept on a Helix mattress. You're welcome. And if you go to helixsleep.com, you get it. <laughs> so listen... I want to see him act. No one's ever seen him act, have they? I know Lipton needs to be a cameo. He, like, he did some sketches. I feel like I've seen him do sketches. <laughs> Chappelle show sketch, I think. You know the way that um, like Seacrest will be in Knocked Up? How do you say his last name again? Seacrest. Okay. Why did you say Seacrest? <clears throat> there was something about it that was like... Ryan Seacrest. <laughs> Seacrest. <laughs> Nick Lecha. You're like, why are you calling me this? Ryan, Ryan Seacrest. Seacrest. Oh, I would fucking hate myself if that's how I did it. And I was hard in the paint that that's how you said it. You know what's something that does trigger me and we'll go back right back to whatever you were going to bore us with? Well, I've got a secret story. A secret story. <laughs> okay. Should I tell? I'll remember. Okay. So I went to a Dave Matthews Band concert and uh, my buddy's the trumpet player, so I got to go uh, What's back. your buddy's name? We'll put his Instagram handle up here. What's that? What's your buddy's name? We'll put his Instagram handle up here. Rashawn, the trumpet player? Rashawn Ross. <laughs> you know what? I feel like you're what's that? You heard me, but you actually, he's not really a buddy and you forgot part of his name. I wish that's what it was, but I'm also- a, I always yeah. go with Ross when you forget the last names. Yeah, let's let's go through the famous roster. So Andy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so your trumpet players are friends with Dave Matthews. Yeah, so I'm in the backstage. Or no, your friend is trumpet players with Dave Matthews. So I'm in the Dave Matthews band, and I was backstage <laughs> before the show, and Seacrest is there because he's a fan, and it's an Irvine. Say it again, Seacrest. Okay. And I'm in the. Uh, I'm in the. A lot of people are going to think I'm saying Sucrets, which hey, when I've had that's sore our throats, other sponsor. When I've had s- sore throats, so throats when I. <laughs> I thought you were talking about su- Sucrates, uh, Sucrete, su- Secret. Socrates. Secret, who was, uh, who was the Postmates driver who, who I had on my podcast episode. But then Socrates 100. is a philosopher. Yeah. Hey. Is that a white Russian? 
Are we going to use any of this so far? <laughs> <laughs> so Seacrest backstage. Cheers, guys. I go up to him and I go, hey, man, my freshman year of high school, I was on a game show you hosted that only aired in Seattle called Click. And he goes, holy shit, that's a deep cut. I go, yeah, man, I was on that. <clears throat> and then two years later, I see you going, this is American Idol. And I go, whoa, man, that was crazy for me. And he goes, that's crazy. And then there's just a beat. And I look into his eyes and I was very high. And I, right. and I could recognize that he was too. And there's just a beat the way he's looking at me. And I go, I go, dude, I'm pretty high. And I'm thinking you are too. And he goes, you got me. And then we wow. shook hands and, and I got his email to maybe do the podcast and followed up twice and then never heard back. So Andy, <laughs> your favorite food. So what? You, you got to follow up three times. I think, yeah, <laughs> you're exactly up, right. Follow up right now. The follow up podcast. I'm calling him. I have a few people I can follow up with that they'll never. I'm calling him. You have his number? Yep. Andy doesn't understand the podcast game. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> I've been so out of the podcast. Hello. Game. Uh, hey, is this uh, Ryan Seacrest? Oh no, this is his phone answer. Hold on, I'll go get him. It's pronounced Seacrest. Hey, what's going? Hey, what's going on? Oh fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the most famous person oh. you've met in L.A. Um, since you've been here, Lindsay Lohan. Whoa, go on. I That's so I Andy. I dance with I, <laughs> I dance with Paris Hilton one time. Whoa, on first time. whoa, <laughs> these are two cool. great stories. Uh, well, one. Um, Warren G. I met. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, I'm actually, not big, but I mean, I'm from the '90s. No, Regulators is one of my favorite songs of all time to dance to. I have a pretty interesting. Uh, never mind. Paris Hilton was she a good dancer? Well, there was a place called Basque on Hollywood, and you would go in there. My friend worked the door, and it was like one of those exclusive places in like the mid 2000s. And uh, it was all she had a fucking a rope. Uh, velvet rope around her area yeah. dancing and she came out into the dance floor and it was like me and my friend and she was like dancing behind like back to back with me i was going like holy fuck that's awesome did you get a boner no why probably on coke or something <laughs> does coke take away the boner ability <laughs> any stimulant does so don't like if people think like ecstasy or anything like that like you can that was a that's a big misconception about ecstasy i think because we did a lot of that in college and like it gets rid of your boner right away that's so andy well, do you know? So Andy, wait. So, so all stimulants take away your boners because I'm drinking the Rock Zo Energy Drink right now, and it has no carbohydrates, no sugar. That will have an effect. No fat. It and will I've have been an hard. I've been hard as a rock since I got here. Does that <laughs> uh, uh, Michael Bublé is like uh, part of that bubbly drink? Boba tea. There's a bubbly drink, and yeah, like no, there's a commercial where he goes up on the billboard and changes bubbly to bubble. I love that. Um, and I was just thinking about how much Derek Jeter could do something similar with something. There's no jitters, <coughs> only Jeters. Derek Jeters. Hi, I'm Michael Bublé, and I love The Rock. So Lindsay Lohan was yeah. What's that? Okay, so it? then there was another place called Goa on Coenga and Selma. What a cool club! And man. my other, all my friends like worked the doors and bartending shit. So we'd go there, and um, we got in there early. Before it got really packed. Real quick, note to editor for the rest of this thing, just slow Andy down like to 80%. Well, I've had some uh, stimulant. And uh, so we went upstairs and there was nobody upstairs and this girl was sitting there and this is like the heyday of her shit, like probably like 2005. This and is she, like this is like post Mean Girls, but still still like getting off. Still, yeah. By the way, real quick, I just got to say, I just saw one of Andy's go-to catchphrases on That's So Andy, where anytime he drinks a soda, he for some reason calls it a stimulant. And all the kids are like... <laughs> And he's like, you guys want to grab me a stimulant? Put it on ice. They're like, you mean a Coke? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me one of those. A stimulant can. Yeah, we're right in the show. All right, sorry, keep going. But she was upstairs and like, uh, you know, like, like one of those areas where you look down the dance floor, but there was like a couple tables. And yes. She was just sitting there by herself. And I, we were standing up there. I'm like, who the fuck? She was so fucking good looking. And I didn't know it was her. And I was like, that girl is so fucking good looking. And someone goes, that's Lindsay Lohan. I was like, holy shit. So she's really movie yeah. star looking in real life. That's awesome. Mm. Back then she was. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, you, know, you never know with the CGI and the makeup and the prosthetics. Yeah, but this the, is 2005. 2005, they, everyone kind of looked the way they looked. But she was like really movie star looking. I was like, holy fuck, she's Some gorgeous. people just look like movie stars, right? Do we have any friends that have that look where there's out and about, you're like, God damn, you should be on billboards and magazine covers. Mm. Modeling <laughs> toothpaste. Brady, probably. Brady, for a minute. He's a good looking guy, but, but he's but, not, yeah. I'm not, I'm not Young like. Young Brady. I'm not very again a good looking guy. Uh, Francisco Ramos. No, no disrespect. Again, a handsome boy, but it, I, you know there are people that you look at like like Chris Hemsworth. You know, like we don't we're not friends with these people. Boy, oh, I've Which, met I met uh, <laughs> Zach Zach Efron. 
I've met Zac Efron. Yeah? I have a good, a good Zac Efron story, but I don't know if you guys want to hear it. What do you think? Is that a white Russian? It's uh, oat milk, uh, almond milk with uh, some uh, New Orleans coffee. Ooh. Very, very Dean Martin of you. Thank you. I've been putting them in tumblers with glasses. because <laughs> yeah. There's something that does feel like... I actually am... Uh, I found this thing on um, some social media. It advertises stuff that you think you'll want, and obviously you don't want it, but at the same time, how did it know I think I should buy this? And this was... Uh, like Sky Mall. A, a Sky Mall that figured out how to personalize it to each of us. Love that. Yeah, stuff is like, I don't need this, but like... I, mean, I, always, thought they yeah. I always thought they should have made a Bond movie called Sky Mall. Oh, they did. Idea. They spelled it wrong, though. And then Adele got huge off of it. And then she lost weight Sky after the divorce. Mall. Can you imagine if Adele was singing, yes, Sky Mall? <laughs> that could be the commercial. So it was, uh, it's a silicone tray. Sky Mall can't afford Adele. That lets you make, uh, put designs in it. Like, so your ice cubes have designs, like those nice big ice cubes. Yeah. So I'm, I, I did it, but I didn't uh, buy it yet. I'm still thinking about it. But little uh, big ice cubes, like the two-inch ice cubes okay. that have the Take Your Shoes Off logo. Because oh. I give people coffees all the time, so when they have it, if they ever see it's just like a nice little... But then you got to really give it to them right when you put it in because it'll melt, and they're like, what does this say? No, I think they do. They have to do it pretty well where it, it's got to be like in enough, you know? So like it, you have like a little bit of melt room, but we'll find out. When's the last time you guys had a wet dream? By that, do you mean coming or just woke up sweating? Because I got sick in December. Cummed all over the place. I always ruin my... To get my fever to break, though. I've never, right. I've never released. <laughs> I've never released in a dream. You say... Wow. It's funny that you say released in stimulants. <laughs> well, released because in the dream. I'm going to have sex with you until my penis is so stimulated it has a release. <laughs> like, I always thought that was like a... And Lindsay Lohan so hot that she stimulated my penis until I released. <laughs> I always thought that was like a fucking... Like a, uh, like a urban legend. I don't know. <laughs> when you wake up and you have cum in your pants... I've never had that. Wait, wait, wait. I woke I up with a boner. Yeah, I don't know if I've ever come to my pants. So. Yeah, see, like you wake up with fucking everywhere. I like, just saw Andy on a spelling bee, script spelling bee, and the word is stimulant. And then you're the judge, and that was the sentence you gave him. You go, the word is stimulant. And he goes, oh, can you use it in a sentence? And you go, my boner <laughs> Lindsay got Lohan. Yeah. <laughs> Lindsay Lohan stimulated his penis so much that you had a release. Lindsay Lohan stimulated. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. S T. Yeah. Are you a good speller? No. Did you ever do those elementary school spelling bees? I'm going to tell you my Zac Efron story. Oh yeah. So for like a year, I, I, I have, but I'm not good. Uh, for a year, I was <laughs> tweeting to Zac Efron. At, it's uh, aggressive. Yeah. For a year, I didn't do it 365 times. How many times did you do it? Probably 500, 600 times. Wow, that's <laughs> no. more. I don't know, like 20 times over the course of a year. It's a lot. Yeah. Well, any response? I have I, basically, basically, I just said in a galaxy far, far away, and you're like, "That's far." Anything else happened? I'm like, yeah, there's so many things that happened, man. It's Star Wars. You probably, sp <laughs> probably spelled his name wrong. It's Z, Z A C. There's no K. Yeah, a lot oh. of people fuck that up. Oh, where I sp fucked up was was A F R O N. Maybe I was uh, Afron. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> Heck, so I was sending these messages um, that were, this was at a time when people really didn't see your tweets Color. if you didn't, if you started with at the name. Because mm. now you could see the responses and oh. it shows it different. But back then it was a thing where, though it's public, if people, if either they follow both of you or if they go to your things, but people did, not that many people really saw it. Right. So it would always be at Zach Efron with nothing before because I didn't want too many people to see it. And it would be uh, little things like, uh, 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 you left my, you left your wallet in my car, or uh, things that were personal. Like, what's the cheesecake factory thing that you liked? You know, just like silly little things. That, that's so Rick. Like, <laughs> you're really good at that shit. Thank you. Did he respond? <laughs> I, I mean, I'm not even on episode four yet. Starting well, at three. I want to know how the show ends. Um, ladies and gentlemen, Zach A. Fraud. <laughs> <laughs> Some fat guy that looks like kind of like yeah. him. He's like. The fake? No, that's just my, uh, it's my uh, degenerate ape NFT. Thank you for coming in. He's got a Larry Bird jersey on. You could get out of here now, bud. All right, thank you. It's worth like 10 grand, this guy. I'm into NFTs now. <laughs> um, for those of you just only listening, you didn't see, but uh, it's my Solana pickup. So uh, now I'm at some party, and Zac Efron is there. And Okay, this is great. And... Uh, did you say what up to him? Yeah, well, it was, uh, it was just, uh, <laughs> well, here's the best part. I haven't even gotten to me approaching him yet. I love this. And it was at one of those parties where it's like everyone, for whatever, there's so few people there that everyone there in that moment in time, they're all, we're all equals, you know? 
It's like um, it's like if if like you're playing basketball with you know people that you're a fan of, but like here we're just basketball players. Here we're just at the party, you know. Yeah. Right. So it was easy to have casual. He came up to me. I was going over there. Like it was just people like what's going on type of thing, and uh, uh, nobody was freaking out like that. Can't believe that Zac Efron. No, and also it, you know even though this was a, probably six years ago, I I think like we're already at the point now. I was on Undateable already, so I'm already at the point to even if there was someone like that, I am in my head being like, just be cool, dude. Yeah, come on, man, we're that's all on the way TV. You play it. Also, he's not somebody that that <clears throat> I would that <clears throat> I don't know. That's not somebody that, that did that for me. You know, that just felt like here's just a cool, strong guy amongst a house of so many cool, strong guys. Oh, there's like, a lot of cool, strong. It was guys. like an actor house, gotcha. and there were other actors, and you know who some of them are, and they're just all like. So we're talking to Zach, and uh, and uh, I already got him laughing. So now I feel like, oh, by the way, uh, you know I've been tweeting you for like a year. Can I ask real quick? What'd you get him laughing with? I don't remember. I, I'm, I'm, I good, I'm like, good in a party. I, I know don't remember. You and that's why I asked. I want to know what your... Did you go up and sit? I don't think you just approached, and I think Andy will probably attest to this. I don't think you just approached and said... Hi, I'm Rick, and then you said some funny line. He did you some did, weird Rick shit. Did probably. a weird, yeah, some weird Rick shit. He, bit, bit. Like Rick, Rick will f- like trip and like trip throw over water on him. And he's like, dude, the fucking water. You're like, hi, I'm Rick. You know, yeah, it's like, yeah. I, I, I'm not mad at you saying that because, like, <laughs> if I were you and I didn't know me, I would be like, yeah, that's probably right. That's like a caricature version of it, though. No, yeah. um, I really made myself trip, so it was real. Okay, yeah, I mean, and it was hot coffee. <laughs> Something else. I, would, I have a hot coffee story after this. Okay. Something else that would be fun to do to go up to Efron <clears throat> and kind of stand this. and kind of stand and kind of <laughs> Jesus stand, Christ and kind of stand next to him and just go, go, hey, who's that really cool guy? Stand like get right behind Efron and go, hey, who's that really cool guy with the fro and glasses standing next to Zach Efron? I don't know. He seems like the coolest guy at the party. Uh, I find that when you're at a house party, especially as somebody who grew up not like being included and in going to these things, so the few times I went to parties as a kid, it really mattered to me. Like. You, it's like when you're playing basketball, you want to play well because you want to be invited. You wanted to be invited back again. Yes. So I learned at an early age to uh, not go come in too hot because that's what I always do. Yeah. So it's it's the coolest when you're at a party to just sit down and just know at some point you're gonna get a laugh. Once you get the laugh, that's when the game started. It's Easy almost crazy. like it's like when you're shooting foul shots, see how many you could do in a row. Like when you came over, you hit twenty something in a row. Yeah. It doesn't start until you hit the first one. And now let's play ball. So got to laugh. So it almost is like people aren't thinking like, oh, they're trying to, you know, like um, they're trying to get me. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. I think human, humans were, were attracted to people, even just like chase, like when you chase a girl, like you're attracted to people who like aren't throwing attention at you. Right. So in a, in a party situation when you're when you know when you when you grew up insecure with this stuff you're, you're conscious of this stuff so you yeah. get a laugh yeah and then uh i probably wasn't even looking i was like oh by the way you know i've been tweeting you for a year <laughs> you know like um nice and he goes uh what do you mean i go i've been tweeting you uh, uh i just tweeted because coincidentally i tweeted him like two days ago i didn't know i was gonna see him at a party wow uh about the cheesecake factory and he goes i saw those that's those are so funny i almost responded and i'm like respond and so he's with some girl who is his whatever the thing may be. I don't know if it's an assistant, a social media person, a part of a team that's also a friend. That when you're that famous and you go to social gatherings, you always got someone neck. there. Oh, well, it, go ahead. I could do that bit if you want. <laughs> if you've ever been at a party with Zach Efron and Andy Cozell's drinking a stimulant <laughs> in the corner while Rick Glassman does some Rick shit bit to get Efron to notice his tweets. Yeah. <laughs> you might be the guy that falls at a party. There it is. The whole point was for the one thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, so he has somebody there, and, and uh, she's like, oh, I want to see. And Zach's like, it's really funny. He's been doing it, and he mentioned one. Like, he knew of one of the things that, that it was. She looks it up, and she's laughing, and now it's like, cool. And she's like, oh, I got to follow you and, and, from Zach's account. And she pressed follow, but, there was, but the internet access wasn't working. And, uh, and you know, I know it's really superficial oh. and corny, but... You know, at the time, I mean, even now it would be cool. Who cares? But then I'm still new to this stuff. I just got my first TV show. It was exciting. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a blanketed statement to say that only when you're on a TV show, it's exciting. Whoa, it's weird that you just, you said, just said blanketed, blanketed statement blanket and the blanket just fell what off the your fuck? chair. Did you do that on Did purpose? Did you do that on purpose? Do we have a you? That's, you know. So if I open this right now, you'd be mad. What to do? Right. I don't want to. It's, it's not a TV now. I don't know. I'm yeah, really not. I'm so sorry. But is it kind of also, you ever watch the stand up on your TV? No. Okay. First of all, this isn't a blanketed statement. We're both very hyperactive people. Kind of send you a uh, 
George, so would you make up whatever that kind of stuff? Okay. This is a blanket statement. Mm. You see what I'm doing here? Yeah. And that's a big blanket statement because Betty gets paid. How many ribs are stinking? Yeah. We'll find out. There was a blanket on the back of the chair. And then he and said, said blanket. blanket. <laughs> We're like the two kids in the sandlot. Yeah, who just, who they cut because they wouldn't stop interrupting. <laughs> The blanket did. That was blanket. That was fucking crazy. You didn't see that <laughs> or plan that. Blanket wants in. Um, what do you guys think? Leave some comments in the thread. Let me know if you think it was planned or if it wasn't. Oh, like I wrote that. Fucking asshole. <laughs> Go. Uh, yeah. The comments are below. Do you not know YouTube? <laughs> or you're you're pointing to the browse to the, all the other windows. Oh, I thought you were gonna do some like editing and put them like bloop bloop bloop. You know, like yeah. fucking. Minority Report. Too. Mom, I think Uncle Andy released on the blanket. <laughs> um, you know, I got a, I got a, um, right. uh, and, uh, real and, quick, let me just tell you this. There was only one of these things left at the store I went to, and I, and I was curious if they had more, and I looked up the Excel sheet to see all of the, uh, the inventory, and uh, there was only one left. Um, you know what they called it? The Minority Report. Oh. Did they really? Well, that's just a joke, because uh, black people are a minority, and a report is a balanced statement. Great movie. It's true. What is who is, who is that family? I saw this and I loved it. Yeah, and it's a it's a great piece of it's um, a great piece. And also, you know, I'm uh, and I've spoken on this before, but I'm not a father. Um, but <laughs> I, uh, I I do think it's important either. to uh, yeah sure Andy me neither yeah <laughs> yeah okay Adam out of us three who do we think is probably a <laughs> yeah father? okay fake Zach Efron he goes fuck you <laughs> yeah Zach Efron. <laughs> Uh, I think it's important that we buy our kids and uh, dolls that aren't just an action figures. Because I grew up playing with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Me too. To me, everyone's green. But a lot of people who are playing with dolls, it's usually just the race that they have. And I think it's important that we play with black dolls, white dolls, Asian dolls. Uh, those are the main three, black, white, and Asian. But I'm sure there's other dolls that are Star important. Star Wars figurines were kind of... That's great, too. Yeah. Diverse. Like diverse. Yeah. G.I. Joe was diverse. Yeah. The Turtles were diverse. Boys. Had boys had diverse action True, figures. But girls, girls, usually and, Barbies. There was usually, no trans Barbie or, or rabbi Barbie or, um, you know, slut Barbie. You know, I think all the Barbies were slut Barbies. Yeah. Look at their bodies. <laughs> Whoa. 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 Hot take. And also, technically, technically, <laughs> that's I, so Andy. I think Ken was a trans Barbie, right? Because Ken technically no. doesn't have a dick. Well, post op, you, you, Ken. You got to look for it, man. He, I've looked. Here's the thing about Ken. He's just not as well endowed as we expected. No, I think Ken doesn't have a penis. And the reason why, I'm just going to be honest, and is because gay. they just, they just, the, Ken doesn't have a penis. The same reason why when you have a Zoom meeting, you, you only wear a top half of a suit. They don't think anyone's going to see below. True. But if they would have made genitals for Ken, it would have been all that same color, and they would have had the pubes, but the pubes would have been the same color. I know, right? They're all been been pink. They're all been pink. Yeah. I respectfully yeah. disagree. I don't think Mattel was concerned at all with the pubic region. <laughs> Right. Well, I he's mean, saying if, if, but I mean, if they because they all the yeah, mold, the molding. I don't, I don't think they would ever put pubes. No, on but a he's Barbie. saying if so, based on the way molding works, they're not going to hand paint black pubes. <laughs> black yeah. pubes on Ken. Well, what or, or, or aren't even, all pubes black? Or even put is, is even put like, don't even you have put little pubes? things like. Oh, I guess Andy. What color are your pubes? Dark. They're, they're still dark, <laughs> even though you have blonde hair, right? Well, we got to say there was two Kens, though, too. There was a blonde Ken and there was a dark Ken. I don't think we have Ken. to say that. I want to talk about your pubes. When you release, what color? Blonde people don't have blonde That's what pubes. I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Pubes don't change color when Unless you release. Unless you're like fucking big Norwegian, like, no. <laughs> I'm Norwegian. I can say it. <laughs> Speaking of toys real quick. One sec. I'm really more of a listener. Of course, Adam has a phone that is a listener. Alexa, set timer for 15. Siri. Siri, I mean, set time for 15 minutes. Siri, baby, 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 Alexa is a friend. Alexa is a friend. I was just with her as a friend. By the way, I've never used Siri <laughs> real quick. Never. Stop saying real quick. It never is. And it's just, it's filling up space. Can I talk to you for a second? Yeah. And you take off your headphones so you can't hear this? Oh. <laughs> No, Andy, 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 leave the headphones on. It's a, oh, hold on hey, to the can. At the end of License to Drive, the coffee was empty. Okay. Did you ever see License to Drive? No, who's in that? Haim and Corey Feldman. 
Fuck. I should see that. Those oh, are- my God. It's one of the best movies ever. Watch it tonight. Corey Feldman's my favorite Ninja Turtle voice of all time. Donatello in the original crushes it. Speaking of Donatello and Ninja Turtles, my best friend Colin Eisler, when I was nine years old, had every toy because his parents were together. They had money. They were both doctors, and I was jealous. I had a single parent, not a lot of cash, and shitty toys. So I go to his place. He's got everything. I took an Ecto-1 and a couple other figurines. And I go, That's Ghostbusters. Yep. And a couple other figurines, turtles. He had everything, like I said. I took them and I go, I'm going to borrow a couple toys. Wow. And I was a big kid. And so you knew you were going to keep them? I, you know, it's one of those things where it's like when you rent a video back in the day from Hollywood Video or Blockbuster, you're like, I'm probably holding on to this for a while. No, I didn't think that way. I would, I'm rewinding it and returning it. Yeah, I would. Oh, no, no. They're, well, I guess in high school, I'm talking about. My buddy worked behind I the I think ga- you're just a thief. No, I kept, I kept games longer than they were due. And because my buddies from high school worked behind the desk and they're like, Hey, it's 80 days due. You got to bring it back. Would you like, always say, can I, ha- can, I, uh, can I use this game real quick and then not return it right away? No, I would pay for it. I would just then hold on to it for a while. And then they would just go, just bring it back. We're good on the late fees. So I hide the toys under my shirt and I walk out and his mom's taking me home. And I'm hiding a couple toys under my shirt. How old were you? Nine. I'm a big kid too. And I'm holding them like this and I act like I have a stomach ache. This shit should have been on my fucking reel, my acting reel. So I go <laughs> I outside. I you're stealing reel. <laughs> They're like, what is this nine-year-old clip? I like this. <laughs> <laughs> well, dude, it was probably actually a shitty performance. I walk out and I go, oh. Then why is it on your reel? Oh, because oh, oh. I'm a kid and kids get a break. But then you were putting it on your now reel, too. No. <laughs> yeah, so but I, you said you would put it on there now. Yeah, which I think it still works. All right. I'll so get was the, it I'll pointing get... with the, the fingers and all that stuff? <laughs> hey, man, what color are your pubes? <laughs> oh, it's down here. I thought you were in the stomach. Ache. So I'm holding, I'm holding my uh, shirt over like that. I'm like, ah, ah, ah. Just really poorly, you know, delivering. I'm like, oh god, my stomach. And just, I think the food you made was bad. Just no, insulting sl- her, yeah, <laughs> slamming her. Oh fucking- gosh, I'm not feeling well. I think it's maybe because there's kind of like an energy that you give off that I feel like your husband's annoyed with you. <laughs> I think it was that cream corn, that fucking diarrhea yeah, the, soup you made. The thieves dilemma. Like he has to make shit out of her food to like get <laughs> yeah. away with this. The thieves yes. dilemma. <laughs> thieves dilemma. You, your, your examples are 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 uh, book titles. <laughs> That's episode two of That's So Andy, yeah. Thieves Dilemma. Yeah. That's So Andy, colon, The Thieves Dilemma. And speaking of Colin, my buddy's that's, that's, that's when it goes to movie. My, buddy's fr- my buddy, whose toys I was stealing, his name was Colin. And guess what? His dad was a colonoscopy doctor. And why did he name his son Colin? Because colon. That's fucking crazy that you said colon. And my friend's name was Colin. And he was named after the colon because his dad's a colon doctor. So I'm holding the I got to say something. I got to acknowledge. Colin. You just ex- ex- said that story twice, the way people who set up impressions will set up the long impression first. And the impression that the scenario is so long that they feel like people forgot. So they set it up again, but shorter. Here's my impression of a crab on holiday who doesn't want anybody to know he's a crab. So he pretends that he's a person. It's a crab on holiday pretending he's a person. Yeah. Crab on holiday. Yeah. 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 Oh fuck! Good thing I'm not wait, a crab. Wait, wait! And they always they always fake laugh. They always go, "Crab, stop! I'm, I'm laughing. Don't make me laugh." Yeah. You know, it just goes oh, on forever. Yeah. yeah, to get to get people to get more excited. All right, so here it. Is. Yeah. All right, you are right. So here's a crab on holiday, not wanting anybody to know that he's a crab. What holiday? It's it's uh, it's just it's summer break. Crab. Yeah. It's actually funny. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know, you can bring him in. <clears throat> yeah. But really, you're thinking, this shut guy. up, dude. Yeah, shut the fuck up. <laughs> so I met this party with Zach Efron. <laughs> and then, then, then go, wait, they go, wanna- I, I know I got the light. I, got, I know I got the light. Uh, this is take real, two seconds. Oh. And it's like another 10 minutes. Oh, yeah. Who's lighting them, Jack or Terry? <laughs> <clears throat> oh, I mean, if it's, if it's, have you heard about the improv show it's a whole bunch of people that just run the light it's called who's li- who's lighting them anyway we'll do, let's do one more time cut yep have you heard about this this uh improv show where they do these scenes but people always go too long it's called who's lighting them anyway so the toys are under my shirt and i get to the van and i'm about to get in and, and sh- something must have been oozing out Either did you say ooze because of the turtles m- or the ecto maybe the it was ecto. my maybe it was my belly and so she, either that or the toys and she comes over and she just goes Hey, um, what is that? And I go, oh, my stomach ache. You're shitty food. <laughs> <laughs> stomach ache, shitty food, turtles. <laughs> and I'm about to get in the van. She just grabs my arm and turns me around. And it sucks goes, and my cock. <laughs> <laughs> and I released all the ooze because it was so stimulating. <clears throat> and I said, cowabunga, S splinter, cowabunga. And so I. Mm-hmm. Hey, Adam. <laughs> 
This episode is brought to you by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Check out betterhelp.com slash Tyso for 10% off your first month. Oh, guys. Oh, I know many of you know me, Miranda. This is my sister, Annabella. Hi, everyone. Put in cheers. Yeah. I have been in therapy since I've been nine years old. Um, so as a very unwell person, I will say therapy has gotten me through everything. It could really help with your relationships, friendships, with coping skills and how to manage your stress, depression, or anxiety. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. Does that do something for you, girls? I think especially maybe if you're starting out with, with therapy, having a phone therapist, you know, feels a little bit less vulnerable and maybe is a good place to start. More of a safe space. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy and you could start communicating with your therapist in under 48 hours. Unload the stressors and get some unbiased feedback. You'd be pretty surprised of what you might gain from it. See if it's for you. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp and Take Your Shoes Off listeners get 10% off your first month by visiting betterhelp.com slash Tyso. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash Tyso for 10% off your first month. So every morning when I'm counting the bits of the sensors of the corners of my four post bed, remember? <laughs> sugar Ray. It's funny that you bring that up because one thing I'm trying to stay away from is sugar. Mm -hmm. One thing I'm not trying to stay away from is my packet of athletic greens. Mm -hmm. You've tried it, haven't you? Yeah, in the morning, especially for me, I feel like I'm always in a rush and I don't get my nutrients and my vitamins all the time, but this is so easy to like put in your coffee or your water, it's just powder, you mix it up and you're good to go. I know that this is an ad, so obviously I'm advertising. This is something that I really like and use. It contains less than one gram of sugar, no GMOs, no nasty chemicals or artificial anything, while still tasting good. It's cheaper than getting all the different supplements yourself. And Athletic Greens has over 7,000 five-star reviews. Which is more than what Take Your Shoes Off is. So real quick, just give, go ahead. If you're listening on iTunes, give it a, give it a five-star review. Leave a little comment. Say, yeah. I love Athletic Greens in the comments so we know who sent you. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition, especially heading into the flu and cold season. It's just one scoop in a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash Tyso. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash Tyso. To take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Dad. Dad? Yeah, Rick. Dad, could you tell me what's so exciting about the conference championships this year? They started with 32 teams. There's very few teams left now. These are the money games, Ricky. These are the games that count. So get onto that FanDuel app and bet that $5 with a chance of up to winning $150 when you use promo code TISO. Say when signing up. When signing up. <laughs> Download the FanDuel Sportsbook app, use promo code TISO, and pick your conference championship team before kickoff. Mandatory disclaimer. 21 and over at present in Arizona, Colorado, Connecticut, Iowa, Illinois, Indiana, Michigan, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Virginia, or West Virginia. New users only. $10 first deposit required. Must wager in a designated offer market. Max bonus $150. Bonus for Tennessee users fulfilled in site credit within 72 hours. Tennessee site credit expires 14 days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See full terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1 800 Gambler or visit fanduel.com slash RG in Colorado, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Virginia. 1 800 Next Step or text Next Step to 53342 in Arizona. 888-79-777 or visit dad say it with me www.1800gambler.net in west virginia you got it right and you can bet on it the world famous fan duel disclosure it's one of the best folks all right back to the episode love you girls love you uncle steve let me get you you know that when my mom signs off on any phone call, whether it's like a doctor or me, she goes, mm-hmm, bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> so she grabs my hand and goes, let go of your shirt. Bro, my stomach dropped. I let go. And fucking three dogs just went <laughs> boom, 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 on the ground. And I looked down, and then I looked up at her, and then I looked at my buddy, and then I just went, uh, <laughs> and acted like my stomach was still And it kept hurting. going? Yeah. That means that... <clears throat> That'd be actually kind of crazy if she, she's taking you home and she goes, Adam, I want to talk to you something. I'm, I want to suck your dick. And you go, shit, he has the toys there. And they're like, <laughs> that would be that's so Andy. Then he goes, oh, shit. And then she goes, and all the toys fall. She goes, you're a thief? And I go, no blowjobs for you. And I go, that's so Andy. Wait, you would do the yeah, sound? When it's like, they're, you know, they would. I think he show? We can't afford sound I can effects. do the show. I, you can do the sound. Like, you just make a sound? I feel like you make the face and the sound is just. Yeah. Also, I love that you're a nine-year-old kid getting blowjobs. I feel like I got my first handjob and still believed in Santa. 
When how old? When was the hand job? Some girl rubbed my your cock in like your sixth, cum? sixth grade, like over the pants. But I was like, what if you said like rub my belly grade, button? I believe in Santa like way longer than I should have. I wouldn't have cared. <laughs> I believe in Santa way longer because my brother was older and his friends. His friend said he fucking saw him. Santa? Yeah. And I remember going, like, come on, dude. And he's like, dude. <laughs> and I remember like, we, we, I, I believe in it like another three years. Holy shit. Who's his friend? Brian Buckus. His last name is Buckus. Do you think he made it up? Well, of course. That's not a real last name. That's something that... No, Santa. That he saw Santa. No. I'd like to speak to uh, Buttkiss, first name Brian. Is there a Brian Buttkiss? Oh, fuck. Who's going to Buttkiss Brian? His dad was our band teacher, too. <laughs> Mr. Buttkiss. That's a good band teacher name, though. Yeah. Is what? there a bad band teacher name? I, I feel like a band teacher could get away with any name. I had Mr. Harshman. Mr. Homophone. <laughs> <laughs> Easy like, Norwegian. Like a, like, a, like a weird... Homophone. 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 What does that mean again? Homophone. I, th- like a, I think it's like a like a instrument. No, a homophone. I think is homophone is is two words <laughs> that sound alike. That's that sound the same but are spelled different. Like the word two or four. Could we sell the game show? Hi, I'm John Johnson. Oh, Welcome back to Homophone or Homophobe, where we're going to show you two words and a picture of a man, <laughs> and you decide who's a homophobe and who's a Homophobe. <laughs> Homosexual. That'd yeah. be a great, yeah. that'd be a good show for summer. Dude, you can do anything at this point. What show has not been done? I'll tell you something. A show that's never been done before that you could see now on Amazon Prime, and that's As We See It. Let's cut to a uh, clip or just put up a flyer? No, I just put up a clip of, I did it, made a, tra- in the uh, Eric Griffin episode, I uh, we were, I, I uh, cut to a clip of the sixth lead, that web series I made, a little trailer, oh, yeah. and they YouTube flagged it. Even though I have the rights to it. It's your show. And I wasn't able to get, and I lost hundreds of bucks from YouTube. YouTube's rough. Yeah, but there'll never be anything else that comes out to trump YouTube. Like, YouTube is here to stay. Would you agree? WeTube. What's that? I don't know. What, I mean, what else, yeah, what else could it be? Oh, you're saying what would come out yeah. that would... Like, yeah, YouTube's big. Uh, I, I, uh, uh, Vimeo is doing a big push now. Did you know MySpace is trying to get back into it? Everything's cyclical. Book titles. Yeah, dude, you, you're, <laughs> the, you're the, the thievers' remorse and everything cyclical. What dude, was the fucking thief ni- one? 90s, 90s clothes Thieves is coming dilemma. back. Yeah. I remember, not, look, I'm wearing a flannel. Like, I got rid of all my flannels. Like, my friends used to make shit out of me. Like, dude, way too many flannels in your closet, dude. And you go, just wait. And I go, and no, and I fucking gave them all the goodwill. And then, like, oh. fucking six months later, like, the 90s are back. Like, that's so handy. No, but, and then I'm like, fuck, those were great flannels. Yeah. And then they came back to me going, you still got those flannels? I'll buy some off you. I'm like, you know what? Flannels for you Love are flannels. like eyebrows for girls who would tweeze and Correct. get rid of their eyebrows and make them thin. And now thick eyebrows are back, and they're like, "I fucking had them. I was I tweezed them, and now I'm getting. Now I'm. I want my thick eyebrows back." Did you know that girls love thick eyebrows now? No. Did you know that? Your girls are really into thick eyebrows. Now. How do you find out about these trends? You just have to. Uh, here's something. I'm being serious. You just have to be open. Mm to swallowing the things that are given to you. Because if you look, you will notice eyebrows are different now. Mm. And then you just ask. Is it pencil then? No, what the people want, what they do is, I don't know what they're doing, but eyebrows, like, they're not tweezing them thin anymore. Right. And also, they're like brushing them up. What is microblading? I hear that a lot. Microblading is a technique to, instead of tweezing it, like, it's like, is it different than rollerblading? It's very similar to rollerblading, but the difference is one is to get rid of hair, and the other one is to is to have uh, is to or put hair in. But oh. like the microblading, I don't get it. It's like you, you use string. Like, how isn't there a better method to use than using string? Yeah, I don't think? know. I guess I I don't know why it's better than tweezing. Maybe it could be faster because it def it, it's just like I've seen video of them doing it, and they just go pretty fast, and it just grabs the hair, and I guess maybe it lets you pu- really pull it out from the root. Thanks. You know, girls are also doing this thing now where they uh, they're going go up. easy. <laughs> Girls, no, Boy, yeah. I'm in a real thieves dilemma right now. <laughs> yeah, I was watching you try to figure out what it is, and then he interrupted you. <laughs> thieves dilemma, also Andy, episode two of your show, but also a great Harrison Ford movie. Yeah, and what does he say? What is Harrison Ford's line that's like in the trailer in Thieves Dilemma? I'm not stealing something that was already mine. That sounded like a bad Frieza impression. This Friday, John Thomas was just a regular dad looking for something to do on a Friday. I'll do anything, rollerblading. But his son I'm came home early from game. school. Dad, I was waiting. To... Dad? Dad wasn't there. Mom, I was waiting. Mom was dead. Mom? <laughs> Mom was in the bathtub with a picture of Dad. 
the bathtub was still running. <laughs> oh, that's not what I had to say. And that's when the neighbor came by to see where dad was. Hey, can I borrow this? Oh! <laughs> Everyone's confused, but the house is open, home alone style. There's lots of free shit because everyone's dead and dad's gone. Next Tuesday on Take Your Shoes Off. Choo, choo, choo. Bad comedy bang bang. <laughs> I like that. That's Thanks. good. I'd watch that. Yeah. I hope. <laughs> <laughs> We should get back. You should do like a, like the old uh, radio, like when you're doing those, you get a script and we can do that. Like the ding, uh, ding, ding. And like, like scripted podcasts. No, like the old Yeah, but that's radio. the thing now. That's that's what they are. They're scripted podcasts. They're yeah. like stories. Well, they don't have cranks and stuff. You yeah. know, though. Tons of cranks. Mm. Speaking of crank, tell us more about some of your, your experiences with stimulants. I don't know. I used to do a lot of drugs. You don't anymore? Or you just don't want to talk about it? It's sober January. Oh, so you will be <laughs> yeah. in February. Why sober January? Super Bowl's coming up. Uh, you know, you got to give your, your body kind of a, a detox. You got yeah. to. I mean, I'm 43 now. Happy birthday. Happy Thank birthday. You. Thank you. What did, what'd you do for 40? I'm going to be 40 in June. I had a big fucking party at my friend's house with a pool. Oh, man. People came out. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. I, I read, you guys I read a thing about Sir Ian McKellen who came out 30 years ago, <clears throat> and he said nobody's ever regretted coming out. Now, I can't speak on this. I, I don't know, but I did think that was interesting. Uh, and he says that Did I just come out life, there? You what talked you about all Your friends came out To the party To the party Yeah Came out to So Ian McKellen was just talking about Coming out to parties I think Great <laughs> Oh I thought he was like Coming out to be gay Oh He's gay Oh I thought you were talking about A homophone That's what the thing That's a Victrola Yeah so yeah He is. He was talking about the gay But I just think that's That was like He said that your life will begin When you come out And, and I thought like If I were gay I'm not gay. Trust me. You guys would know. I'm not. But if I were, which would be fine, maybe I am. I don't care. But I'm just saying that would be really meaningful to me. Ian McKellen has probably, he's gay, right? I imagine. Or I'm saying the wrong guy. One of the guys from X-Men. You think there's ever a shirt out there with a picture of him on there? You know, because people, there's always random shirts with like. Of course there's a shirt with Ian McKellen. Like just of him, not like in one of his roles. You know what I'm saying? Like. Oh, him. I have like a Stevie the, Nicks shirt with the, just her face. But it's not from her from any of those movies she did? Nope. Huh. So I'm at this party with Zac Efron, <laughs> and she is, uh, she's trying to follow me, and I wanted her to, and I watched, and it's just not loading. And um, she's like, oh, I, I, mean, I could try walking around, and I was just playing it so cool. Mm. So I'm like, just screen grab it and do it when you, later. And she never did. Did she end up being someone that later that you found out? Can I tell you something, why, what I don't like about that question? She already was somebody, and so was everybody else there. True. It's probably like the cast of the OC and some Dawson's Creek extras. Well, no, it was on Zac Efron's account. It would have been Zac Efron following me. Did you go through his account and try to find her? How? What do you mean? He does have millions of followers. To go through his account and be like, hey, remember you were going to follow me? Yeah. Now, when you just you when you try to control stuff like that, you get a little anxious. So yeah. you just take it take it as it is. It really helps actually with the podcast and with booking. And maybe you could relate to this in a way. I'm not sure, just because you know we booking is a, such a hard part. Yeah. Where like <clears throat> I can't let it, the only time it bothers it matters to me. I mean, it always matters, but the only time like I get a little anxious is when I don't have a guest next week and I need somebody. Yeah. But like you ask people to be on be guests and they they say yes or they don't respond or they schedule and they cancel or whatever. And there's so much anxiety in it. So if there's like trying to finagle ways to do stuff is uh I don't know, maybe it would be easier to book more people, but it just makes me too anxious. Booker's dilemma. <laughs> <laughs> That's a gambling book. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, there's a two part in that book. Do you gamble? Yeah, I'm gambling right now in the game. Oh, I thought you were saying I'm gambling right now being here. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't. I don't leave the house. I got warrants. <laughs> <laughs> nice, dude. Yeah. Swish. Well, this was great. Wait, do I want to tell you my hot coffee story. Yes. Well, then don't tell us. Wait, what? How does it start? Set Did, the scene. Didn't you just say it's you about didn't rep want... pro wrestling? Great. So my friend, I, I always wanted to go to pro wrestling, like you know, back in the day when oh, I was yeah. young, like Hogan and all that stuff. Oh, man, the Wharton Field House in Moline, that was like the big one that they were outside. Is, isn't that a place in Game of Thrones? Maybe, but the w Wharton Field House in where Moline, Illinois. It's on the. It's by. Uh, it was the big Quad, quad Cities, Quad City DJs. You know, Illinois. Come around the train and, um, and ride it. 
So we went there, redundant. but it was like a, it was like a kind of like a huge place, but the, there was like these weird, you know, the bleachers in high school where they pull out and they fold, you know, when it comes into a wall of and then it comes out, they were, we were sitting on releases, those, releases. We were sitting on those and I was a little kid and we were in like the second row and there was a big fat guy and all this in front of us. And I remember we got these scalding fucking hot chocolate, but in like the little styrofoam cups, oh, which was probably awesome. so bullshit. And I remember what's we're sitting, bullshit. They're like they probably there's nothing really in those styling foam cups. There's not much volume, you know. Or oh, so you saying you got you got a small amount of hot chocolate is what's bullshit. Yeah, I mean, you saying probably, they didn't give us a big bucks. cup of hot chocolate. Yeah, yeah, they Understood. gave us a little dumbass thing. What if they just gave it to you and go? You have to imagine it like hook. <laughs> Andy, we added that stuff out. Keep going. <laughs> but then I remember we all had them, and, and I was a kid. And I remember like before it even started. I remember going. like, Go, and it burned my lips. I even had marks. I go, Bleh! and I went like this and spilled all down this guy's back. And the guy oh. goes, whoa, and like screamed and like turned around and fucking screamed at me and goes, you fucking kid, fuck you. And they had to leave. I think he like. They kicked him out for cursing you out. No, no, because he, he was burned. Like oh. he had a, he had a, because he had, we had a white shirt. I remember it was all, you know, chocolate on his back. It looks like there was enough chocolate to burn him. Though. But he had to leave and he never came back to the sea. I don't know if he, because he was mad, but I remember going like, oh, and I'll never forget that. Like, did I burn that fucking guy? Like, well, yeah, yes. You, you gave him a hot chocolate back bath. <laughs> HCBB, a hot chocolate back bath. And that oh, guy freaked would, the fuck out, huh? What if that guy fucking hears this and he goes, that's me, and he calls? Oh, that'd be amazing. Th- those are the types of reconnections I'm interested in, where people hear things and go, that was me. Like, what if he is truly a big fan of this podcast? And he's he hasn't been looking for you, but he hasn't forgot. You know, you get what I'm yeah. saying? So he hears that, and it, he's just eating a TV dinner one but night. But he wouldn't recognize Andy, so he, he would have had to make it to this part in the podcast, which I can't imagine too many people have. <laughs> Do you want to hear the craziest comeback story ever? Nah, I'm good. Rick, when, you're, me, when, when you were... Um, when you, yeah, find please, it, find it. <laughs> it's about Kirk Cameron's mom. come up with something. <laughs> it's about Kirk Cameron's mom. Man, Andy, uh, you, you have so many references that I know is real, because, uh, but I don't know what they are. Kurt Cameron's mom. So when I was in fifth grade, when they would have like reading time, there was a big bin of books. I remember going there and pulling the, the Kurt Cameron was big back then. I feel like even as a kid, I feel like even as a kid, you still have the same exact face you have now, just a littler body. <laughs> Wait. Same hair, same Wait. facial hair. So I grabbed this book. It was called, pull- it was Kurt Cameron's biography, but a little like the Who's teeny Kurt popper. Cameron? Fucking Growing, growing pains. pains. Kevin. Um, he was like the or, biggest shit no. in fifth grade. This is probably fucking. His best friend's name was Boner. 1987 or something, you know? You, you don't watch Growing Pains? Show me that smile, Ooh, show me that smile. YouTube's Don't gonna flag another. this. Let me, let me mix up the tone then. Show me that smile, Ooh, show me that smile. Don't waste <laughs> another yes. minute on your crying. We know we're near, we know we're near. The best is yet to begin. So did you, you I think you said the best is yet to come. I'm like, yeah, what? Yeah. But so. so Okay, so I get the book, oh, and you go in there and you get the book, and I was like reading this like a little teeny popper book. It was like a paperback, but in the back of it, I read the whole thing, and then the back it said "Fun Facts of Kirk," and I was like looking through there, and one said, and it said Kirk has never tried chocolate, and I remember even as a fifth grade, I go this fucking bullshit, and and I remember always remember that shit. Go like uh, fucking that Kirk Cameron book. Why would they write that? What? Even as a baby, he didn't remember it. Like as a baby, like the mom gives you chocolate, like he doesn't remember. Every kid eats chocolate. So yeah, yeah. So cut to another when 90s I start when I'm starting comedy. I, I had a friend from the Judy Carter class that I took when I first started. A, a, hold on, hold on. A, a book, a book, a book for 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 white racist families when their daughter <laughs> decides to to be a little bit more liberal with who they decide to date. Everybody eats chocolate. <laughs> so uh, I meet this girl, and she was one of my friends in class. But she became a Christian comic, and she would like travel. And, like, Do you remember any money. of her Christian comic jokes? No, I don't. Not off the top of my head. But, um, you know, hey, I'm being a Christian. You know, that gets last there. Uh, <laughs> you wouldn't believe what they love it. Um, Another well, great book title. Hey, as long as they believe. So she, she tells me, she goes, hey, you know, maybe like three years into my career, she goes, hey, uh, we're doing this thing for kids. It's like a comedy class thing for these, you know, Christian kids. She goes, will you come out and just be like a speaker like or talk to them? It's like kind of a workshop. Because yeah. at this hey, point, you've been doing stand-up for three years, and that's like famous to hometown people. True, true. But it was here. And uh, so it was like in Woodland Hills or whatever. And so we go and Kirk Cameron's mom was the one that ran it because she's like, they're big Christians and shit. So you asked her. So we get in there and I do the whole thing and she's like, I'm going to take you guys to dinner. So we go to Cheesecake Factory in Woodland Hills Mall. Awesome. And it's just four of us. I've Uh, been to that Cheesecake. uh, This guy, I'm trying to think, I think it was Ron McGee. Remember him? Uh, He used to work at the Improv and, and Carrie and whatever and me. And then Kirk Cameron's mom and she took us to eat. 
And we're eating, and I go, I just got to fucking ask you something. And I go, and I told her about that book, and she goes, oh, I remember that book. Yeah, that was like unauthorized. I don't know why they did that. And I go, did he never eat chocolate? She goes, yeah, he had fucking chocolate. I don't know why they wrote that. She goes, they wrote a lot of, a lot of bullshit. I go, full circle! And, and I was like screaming. And then as she was saying that, uh, a little baby Andy walks by holding dolls, and he gra- she grabs Andy's arm. The dolls drop out of his pocket. She offers to blow him. He looks to camera and says... Everyone eats chocolate. <laughs> I don't know. Leave it in, but sorry. But then, and then, and then when I left, she we went to her car and she gave us a signed thing of her, a signed of her book. She wait that book from from fifteen no, no, years no, her, previous. She wrote a book. And can then you she signed it? Can you imagine how many unauthorized? Kirk I mean, Cameron's mom wrote a book. Yeah. About what? Being Christian. Yeah, Kirk Cameron apparently is a huge like conservative. Like he has gone on many a news outlets, being like. Gay should not get married. He's very like he's he goes hard in the paint on the wrong stuff. He's like stuff. Uber, mm. Uber. Yeah. yeah. What you Which, should get him on here, all three of like four of us fucking. Dude, I will fucking grill that guy, dude. I will I will get on my chef's hat, put on an apron, and fucking grill him, dude. And then what if <laughs> about it came, his stances? What if it came full circle then? And he goes, Wait, you're the guy that stole my friend's action figures, you know, later. Yeah. First base. <laughs> And his mom wanted to blow you, but you fucking stole shit. Which she said was first base for her. <laughs> you know, uh, so what's what's third? So I want to ask you guys. I want to ask you guys. She's like finger in the butt. That's so Andy. Uh, could, uh, I'm going to ask uh, questions because yeah. I want to know this, and I want you guys to answer one at a time. So I'm going to ask Adam first, then Andy, and there's going to be follow up yes. questions. Okay. What is first base? This isn't a trick. I'm really asking. Like yeah. when, when talking about when hooking you're a kid, up, yeah. First base. Is what? If you made it first base with a girl, what is it? Keep it concise here. Well, we're going to go back to the first time I had a kiss, which was my sister's friend. I'm not asking grade. what was your first base. Oh. This is like Ameri- uh, I'm, just, I'm just saying. Miss America, you know? Well, you know. I'm th- just saying, listen. To answer your question. In 10 seconds, explain to me, if so you were teaching somebody what all this stuff means, what does going to first base mean? Based on my experience. Everything that we'll ever talk about in life is based on our experience. Kissing. See, that's what I'm asking. I'll ask Andy first. I think first Andy, base what is, is first base? Kissing. Okay. What is first base? Uh, heavy petting. What is heavy petting? I mean, getting your cock pet? <laughs> I mean, if you grew or do you up just mean in, like going like this? If you grew up in Cleveland. You must be from the city. What does heavy petting mean? <laughs> that's like, what, what does that mean? Heavy petting is a term they taught us where it's like a lot of like... It's like fingering just, and fucking, you yeah. No, mm, no, it's, it's not, no, no. The heavy shit before sex. It's like light massage and foreplay, and that's like, light petting. I don't so, think you're so touching, heavy, touching, he, touching. He, heavy petting is aggressive makeouts. So, are you kissing? Yeah. So, kissing, kissing, and also massaging. Yeah, but heavy petting sounds dirtier, and it also feels like more oh, of an appropriate. God, five seconds, just, just uh, because there's so many, so many bases and in between. I'm going with heavy petting. Heavy petting is the name, and, of, is the name of a book. <laughs> and kissing or a band. So if you went to first base with a girl, it means you not only you kissed her and you like rubbed her legs and stuff. Or a weird petting zoo. <laughs> or, or like a Queen's Rag song. <laughs> heavy petting. Hey, welcome to heavy petting where you can pet all the animals <laughs> for as long as you want. <laughs> Jesus Christ, a minute is good. Heavy He's- petting would be a good name for a show of a guy that ran a petting zoo farm and it's like the whole, you know. But he's an alcoholic. Yeah, there you go. That's he- actually very... That's actually really good. That's actually really good. Because he's heavy, you know. He's a bit, he's a fat guy too, and he's he used to be in Heavy D in the in the gang. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> heavy D, heavy. Okay, so question two. <laughs> <laughs> What's second base, Andy? Tits. <laughs> what? What does tits mean? Of the shirt. You mean touching tits? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Although if a girl flashed you down the basement, you're like second base, even Yo, if you don't touch him. Please take this and 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 send it to every school across the country to, to play the video. I would like to get an efficient, just okay, guys, okay. just chill. Let's just all chill for a second. No. Simply, first base is kissing, kissing, heavy petting. You have to give me a, what is heavy pet? What is heavy petting, man? I don't know that you don't know heavy petting. I didn't know you're ten years young. Well, you, said, you said you got a, you said you got jerked off in sixth grade, but then it was just is that heavy petting? That's heavy, That's petting. heavy petting. Yeah. So so sometimes so first base is getting jerked off then kind of by Santa in Claus his, in his town. That's what <laughs> Not my town. You got jerked off by Chris Kringle. This guy's in fucking you know. So Seattle gets jerked off at first base, and no, Illinois. No, no hand jobs on first what base. What is heavy petting? What is heavy petting? <laughs> this, 
But that's like when you're can acting you, like you're making out with yourself and you would turn around. Can you put you can like, you put the definition down here when we're talking oh, about this? I did, I did that shit all the time. I used to do that I used to do that that, that, that joke. <laughs> you should put the definition down here when you Heavy petting is a lot of it's a, it's a eh. No, I think I think petting, <laughs> heavy petting is like up the shirt, fingering, and all that shit. Listen, if if there was uh, if you're single and you're in, you're in high school and a girl says goes up to you and that you had a crush on and you oh. said, listen, Adam, no one's around. Really quick, you want to go in the closet and do a little heavy petting? What are you gonna do with her? Oh man, heavy petting is more uh, uh, legal. <laughs> I go like this. As opposed to tit? Like if you're in the, if you're in the court and you're like, oh, then they, you know, he did a little heavy petting with her. and you know. Yeah, that's, it just sounds like political jargon. Yeah, yeah. yeah, by the way, I would much rather hear my description in court versus, and then what's second base? But, and the, the defendant I, said, tits. Tits. But what is heavy Objection. petting? It's it's a it's making out. It's just it's an, it's, it's what's, ramping what's the difference? up. It's groping, groping. All right, so check this out. First base he, is first base out, and a half. Making out and heavy petting. What's the difference? Not what are the similarities? What's the difference? What are the differences? Making out is everyone everyone has a slow speed with that at that age, I think. Heavy petting, which we were um, introduced to in elementary school, is aggressive. Making out. It's going for it. So it's just making out, but also just like Maybe more you're passionate. Touching, like, yeah, make it, to making out in first base is just... <laughs> and heavy petting is... Oh, maybe like putting fingers in someone's mouth or I think just whoa, the, whoa, I think whoa, I think just, whoa! Wait a minute, wait a minute! You're putting fingers in yeah, mouth? But, I don't know, dude. Yeah, I went to a weird baseball, school. If we're doing baseball, it's just it's just getting on first base. It's not a bunt. So, so, you, so you're, you're, you can get on make, bunt. We didn't say kiss. Making out. Making out includes French kissing, yeah. which is when you kiss a person, but also you guys use and girls use or they's tongues. Yeah. yeah so yeah, yeah, French kiss. French kiss, and also like. Like kissing, but also that's the same thing. Rubbing, me. petting. Well, it's like you're not standing in front of the mic. That one of those comics just talks. No, but listen, listen. You got to move your arms. Anyway. We've all we've all made out with multiple people. Sometimes you make out with a girl, and it's just like you guys are making out a little bit, and it's like that was nice. And sometimes you make out with a girl, and like, man, you're into it, and like you're getting a little bit of a of a boner or or, or a stimulant or whatever. But it's still just making out. First yeah. base is making out, right? But if you're talking heavy petting, does that mean grabbing tits and stuff? Yeah. Because Andy thinks that's second base. No, I think it's. I think you're rounding first. But listen, we'll get kiss. to the roundings later. Okay. I just want to know the bases. All right, then first French base is yeah. kissing. First base is French kissing, yeah. Kissing and French is kissing. So just the kissings. Yeah, I mean, but you can just be necking someone. That's not first base. So yeah, I think so it's anywhere the lips are touching. If you had some weird rule like my dad said, no, but making out, making out isn't just making out is is with tongue. If you're French, first base making out, French kissing, like really kissing and stuff. Yeah. Okay. Second base. Heavy petting. Tits. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So first base is kissing. Yeah. And second base is, is, starting is to, above, the, above the waist stuff. I think it's just starting to discover and touch, you know? Okay. Yeah. So second base. By the is, way, discover and touch. Great beach duo. Beach cop duo. Rob Discover and Elon Touch. Mm-hmm. All right. So I think you're touching. You're playing. You're, you're not getting too handsy yet, though, but you're starting, right? Well, it sounds like hands. You're grabbing tits. What does the girl do? If even, a girl, even seeing them. Respectfully, though. So so technically, when a guy goes to second base, he does something. When a girl goes to second base, she allows something. Is there a second base for a girl? Is Good she question. grabbing your tit? Or is she just getting Have her tit you touched? Suck em. Getting her tits sucked. I think she plays but with she your... But she makes you suck them. She, she makes you suck your own tits, yeah. <laughs> Wait, hold on. No, no. I'm really asking. Could we okay. try to stay on the brown blanket? So first base is kissing. Second base is... I guess it's just tits stuff. Sucking tits, touching tits, squeezing tits, tits. showing tits. Just yeah. tits. Heavy petting everything is the whole field. Everything that comes with tits. Until you get home. Or on them base. will be third base. <laughs> correct? Third base is? Fingering. Yeah. Fingering and hand jobs. I yes, think that, yes. now you're going below the belt for third base. But yeah. now, and is that also blowjobs? Is, th is hand job and blowjob the same base? Well, yeah. now, now you're talking about who raised you, where did you grow up? No, we're not talking about that. We're as simple get, as possible. Tits, tits is second base, because, it's just the girl because nobody likes our tits. And balls aren't like. But I got a dick, and she's got a a puss. No. Wow, you definitely aren't teaching the class. <laughs> so then, the third base, you can have both. I, I think. I think it's that mutual. I think that if I, we could all agree that that home run is sex, yeah. right? And Fourth, everything before that is heavy petting. Sure, but that's the name of the ballpark. Okay, heavy petting field where if you get a home run, you get to release uh, from sex. Yeah. First base is kissing. Now, I'm trying to look at this in a place where if home run is at 100, that means second base is at 66, 67, right? So we're closer. Yeah. So second base is, but it just grabbing a tit 
feels closer to first base at 33. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. That's why I'm rounding the. So I feel like second base has to also include touching. Yes, it does. Penis and vagina, but not necessarily <laughs> an ejaculate. A release. Mom? Yeah, I don't know. This that. is where I get confused. Your friend is because still if, here. if third base. It's always been kissing and tits. But if third. Third base is all the, the sure, discrepancy. Sure, third like, base is hand jobs and blow jobs no, no, and fingers and, yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and maybe. I think maybe it's eating out. Lickings. I think his shirt no. comes off at third base. You're telling me you went from from just taking here's taking my shirt off and then the next step is fucking? <laughs> Has sex with a shirt on guy, you know? One of those dudes, <laughs> little butt cheeks hanging out the bottom or something like this. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> you ever see those guys? No. No, I see them all the time. <laughs> <laughs> he had Ralphs. <laughs> yeah, because I Ralph every time I see it. No, I don't mind seeing it. Wait a second. All right. No, so so second. Third base. Can we put a little picture of the guy with the butt? <laughs> I'll send you. I can find one. Here, we'll draw it. Yeah. But how it's about, like this little butt. How about make a gif of Andy doing the... Uh, <laughs> maybe. I don't know how much, how much, how much uh, uh, you know, post-production budget I'm going to throw into this. I think people are going to enjoy this, this episode. This is fun so far. First base is kissing. I could get on board with that. Second base, it has to be more than just grabbing a tit. I think second base has to also include, even if it's above the pants... Touching that doesn't necessarily, yeah. How about that? How about it's under the shirt or above the pants, touching the penis or the vagina? That's fine. By the way, you're definitely the teacher that can't just say it. You have to uncomfortably like do it to yourself. Well, you know, it's a visual aid. Yeah, and I'm that was a compliment. Great. Then I'm definitely the teacher who is better than the teacher who's not. <laughs> so, but third base has to be all those other things because a triple is the hardest thing to hit in baseball. So. Great. Uh, That's why all that shit is there. Eating out, blow. No, no, no. But here, here's here's what you're, here's here's the problem with that. You're taking that analogy too literally, as if the only way to get to third base is to hit a triple. When in actuality, this is more with most things. You're getting on. You're getting a single on first base. Well, that's lazy. You get a walk and then you make it a third on three, but that's a where three walks. That's where you're taking it too literally. Because What's you, a walk? Uh, because. Because if you if you just hit a triple, Heck. if you just hit a triple, that means you're doing blowjobs without making out and without grabbing a tit. So usually you do. You okay, know, a triple is sixty nine. When did toys come into play? Is that like a bunt? Before we could get to the complicated <laughs> nuances, okay. And yes, that's why they call it. That's why they call it a cunt because it's a baseball cunt. By the way, I'm the kid. In, I'm the kid in class with a leather jacket smoking a cigarette. It's like, when did toys come in? Is it a bunt? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you're the, you're the podcast guest leather on the couch jacket, with the leather, leather jacket, jacket guy, no pants, with the bunches, <laughs> yeah. like bad boy Calvin from Calvin and Hobbes, <laughs> yeah. taking a piss with a leather jacket. <laughs> so, so first base, we'll get into the nuances. First oh. base is making out. Second base is under the shirt, yes, over the pants, yes. Third base is hand job, blow job, pussy lick, fingering. It's hand to skin, in in sixty nine or mouth, sure. Okay, it's game on at that's that 69. point. Everything before sex. You got the third base, but I don't think there's any guarantee you're going home. I think you got to, you know, it depends on what but, kind of a lead you but got. But then is there like a grand slam? Is that like the ultimate sex? I think that's, I think that's when there's a, it's, a, get, it's get, like an orgy, right? Like a threesome? Yeah. Where four people get, it's like a gangbang. Yeah. Four people get to. A grand slam is a gangbang? Well, it's it's couple or couple, two couples. Boy, I should have yeah. ordered the gangbang at Denny's. First base. <laughs> what if Adam? Adam, is this, you know that wheezy laugh? You know that. Oh, you go. That, no, you go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I started already. It wasn't like we both started at the same time. It would be like we're at a four-way stop sign, and I'm already going, and then you, and then you go, oh, you go, and I'm like, yeah, thanks. <laughs> I was already going. I was like, fuck you, dude. It'd be funny if Adam told that joke as an opener to a special, and then just couldn't get past how funny it was, and oh. <laughs> just was laughing the whole thing. That would be such a funny special oh. if the comic tells one joke, and then just is cracking up for 20 minutes. And then it just says, produced by, and credits. Yeah, and written by someone else. <laughs> and it's <laughs> one still, little joke. Funny. And it's still showing him on stage laughing as a crowd. Like he just hasn't stopped. <laughs> yeah, and then we pull out to see him just with his naked and then it throws around with his little butt. With a little leather jacket. And I've then, been wanting to do a podcast. There's a couple of porn stars I'm talking to about coming on my face, but then I realized I don't know if I want to do that. So just on the podcast. No, really just the latter. And uh I you gonna do a sound effect? 
Yeah, damn it, I missed it. With an E or an A? Say it again. I was thinking about having uh, porn stars uh, coming on. No, the podcast. The podcast. <laughs> okay, thanks, Adam. We can do it in post. All right. Send them to me. Uh, and I thought it might be interesting if I became comfortable and they became comfortable to do an episode with uh, two porn stars uh, uh, and me interview them while they're fucking each other and really asking them questions about like, both about like sex and, and this and you know the, the G spot and the pressure and the pushing and the touching and the st- and they can actually do the visual aid for the and we could really do it but just having space. them really fucking each other during and then I was like YouTube would like, flag that wouldn't they uh, yeah no you blur it yeah I would blur it it would people I, well, people wouldn't even know it. it's real just blur it and have them simulate it that's the thing I, I don't want to do that you want to <laughs> see it I just think it would be an interesting energy and it feels very yeah, like how it's turned in the, the 90s interesting energy fucking interesting energy <laughs> you're talking about I want to see a couple of girls fuck on my podcast I don't know if it's a girl camera. it could be a guy and a girl it feels like an interesting energy <laughs> yeah because well, once you get porn stars like if you tell them to fucking fake it they're gonna it's not gonna it's look hard real. enough yeah, I don't think they can fake it I don't think they can fake it so it's like <laughs> is that a dare but I want to be able to basically I want to know alright show me second base but don't tell me what it is well that's what I'm saying I <laughs> would know? love to hear their that take stuff. on what we've just discussed yeah I would love to hear the porn star version of first base, second base, third base, home run. You know, porn stars, uh, and let's say just porn actors in general, I think that outside of work, they have a pretty similar... Oh, yeah. Uh, they check their email. What? They're what just, did you think I was going to say? The stars are just like us. He tweets them. No, no. That was back in the undateable days. Uh, th- you, you tweeted porn star? I'll tell you in a sec. But I'm saying their th- idea of Zach what sex... Asfron. Their idea of what we'll sex ki- we'll is, keep it in. I think, is closer to what our idea of sex is. It would be like it would be like assuming that Marvel, uh, like that that uh, Chris Evans, you know, only has really ex- heavy shields at home. He probably has regular weight shields. He probably has zero shields that because he's not actually Captain America. Not anymore. You're right. Spoiler alert. Oh, who they replace him with? Really? Did you not been watching the Avengers? It's <laughs> like okay. All right, you got me for a second. <laughs> I'm 43. I um, watch it. So yeah, during Undateable, when it was first coming out, um, that were for press, there's a lot of tweeting and stuff, and yeah. and uh, I started tweeting just a whole bunch of people. It was around like those Zac Efron days. That's when I started doing it. Obama, Oprah. You tweeted Obama? Oh yeah. Did you really? Yeah. <laughs> Finally gets in the I, door. He, Hollywood he didn't talk. Fucking going nuts. He didn't talk to me. He didn't Can work. I be honest? I would love to see Obama and Rick have a chat on this podcast. It would be an amazing podcast. It'd be fucking incredible. Yeah. Because I think he is the shit, dude. He's a jokester too, you know? Yeah, man. I I would have, 20 minutes in, I would go like this. Oh, by the way, is it Barack? Barack. Uh, Yeah. Barack. This is you and... uh, Uh, That's Malia. And... uh, That's me. Little Rick Glassman. (laughs) Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if we should, you know, any of that stuff. (laughs) (laughs) But uh, so yeah, and also we uh, tweeted a whole bunch of just different people, including some porn stars. And who's your favorite? Uh, Obama. Because uh. <laughs> I'll tell you something: nobody's made me come harder into my understanding of how much this country means not to me, but to the country, to the I'm world. Proud to be American, I used to love that. Song. That's a Trump song, now. Is it really? I used to. I love saw. That I saw song. him. He came to the Mendota Fair. My that, dad, during we, sixth grade, my dad took us. Lee, what, Green, Lee Greenwood. Was he, were you starstruck? Were you star uh, that song, struck? That, that song was huge then. And it was like, you know, the Mendota Corner Festival. I'm proud to be an American <laughs> where at least I know I'm free. Oh, yeah. And I wed uh, the friends who died who uh, gave that right to me. And, and I gladly stand, stand up next to you and defend her still today. And there ain't no doubt I love this land God bless the USA God bless the US. Songs in the 90s used to always do that. They would double down with yep. it. But then the second one, unlike the impressions, it goes shorter. It would be, yep. uh, God bless the USA. God bless the USA. And <laughs> fireworks. God bless. Oh, I'm tired. Pyrotechnics. You know <laughs> How was that? Good catch. How did that even fall? He wasn't even touching that. It was just sitting there like that, and it just moved. 
You think the kid fucking elbowed the... Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Let's get to a replay. His arms were down there, and the thing just went and moved. Like that was really weird. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I knocked it or something. That was weird. Yeah, probably. I don't know, man. Best national anthem you've ever heard? No, oh, the Star Spangled Banner. No, best version, <laughs> best artist. Who sang it? Where were you? What happened? You could just tell us yours. I want to hear Andy's. Shit. Other um, than Lee Greenwood. Which one? No. Uh. Well, Lee. He's a trumper now too, right? I do like the Russian one uh, that I know from Rocky IV. How's that go? I don't know the words. I'm just doing the melody, but like putting some words in there. I like the bend. For the Russian, <laughs> the Russian, yeah. the Russian, the Russian, <laughs> the Russian anthem sounds a lot like the Chicago soundtrack. I love the, I love the. the uh, and all that I was doing the Bulls, the Bulls uh, opening. Oh, Alan, 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 Alan Parsons brother. right now. Welcome, John a racist, Braxton. Racist, racist. What? It's a racist voice. Well, no, it's not. You did a racist voice. The guy, the guy goes. But the guy. Scotty Pippen. Yeah, it's racist, dude. I feel like I got to give your mom a but book that, that's called the, Everyone Eats Chocolate. The guy's so white you, that does it, though. Yeah. Yeah, but that's not that guy. Yeah, it is. He does that with his voice. He goes, John B J Armstrong. <laughs> I don't know, man. That sounds like Fat Albert to me. <laughs> Okay, well, you have racist ears. No. I Bill Winnington. Thank more. you. That sounds more like it to me. BJ Armstrong. <laughs> Much closer. Alan Parsons Project. Great. Uh, Don't say what you're gonna regret. Alan Parsons Project sounds like it could be a band. But it also sounds like it could be like the villain's plan in a Bond movie. Sky Mall. <laughs> What's the last line? If Connery's in it, what does he say? He's on the, the dog's bl- name was over the door basketball hoop. <laughs> <laughs> no, how about he's looking through a Sky Mall magazine? He he's goes, like, I want to go back and get the bar, so I want to get the Trivial Pursuit. Learn the bar <laughs> game. <laughs> we're, so, we're so bad. Remember goes, that? Like, learn the bar. Uh, excuse me, stewardess. Does the toaster in the shower come with the... D- <laughs> You already won. No punchline. That's whatever it is, Andy. You booked it. You booked it. We're just like, oh, the basketball at the bar. You actually sounded like him. I always wanted to buy that shit, though, man. It was like, that was Mm -hmm. the true sign of you've made it to me. Like some of these items. Anytime I saw someone genuinely leafing through one of those magazines, I was like, fuck, dude. Interesting. Do you use the term leafing for anything other than a catalog or a magazine? I don't think I've said the word leafing. Since I don't think I've ever to... said it in my life. Leafing, leafing sounds through? like something that uh, you would do. It's getting to second base if you're in the voice. In the, in the, fuck! Something in the woods. I haven't said the word leafing. You ever leafed a girl? <laughs> it's when uh, you come inside of her and uh, have she her come, there's so much fucking... Pus coming out of her fucking oh, coos oh. that she has to get a leaf. We'll keep no, it it's when you go down there and you go. <laughs> oh, that's, that's mowing a girl. Oh, well, you're leaf blowing. That sounds like an Eric Griffin bit. Because you know how he does like sound effects of like yeah. lawnmowers and dust busters? Whenever I tell Eric I like his sound effects, he's just like, man, eh, what do you mean sound effect? Yeah. <laughs> oh, you think that's all I do is sound. <laughs> <laughs> that was a racist Eric Griffin doing this, the Seinfeld transition bass line. <laughs> the only time I've used the word leafing is when I was trying to Irish goodbye and someone goes, you're leaving? And I go, no, man, I'm leafing. And I tried to cover up. Sure. And stay later. Yeah. Ever done that where you're leaving, someone sucks you back in and you have the best time ever? Or you're leaving, they suck you in and you're like, fuck, I got to get better at just leaving. Most of the time, it's just it's just in the middle. You got to do it later. You can't go to a party in like fucking five minutes. Everyone's like still sober. Like, dude, he's leaving. You know, you got to wait till everyone's wasted. Yeah. What is it about leaving a party before other people that make you feel better than them? I don't know about that. I just they make you feel like they're all fucking miserable pieces of shit, and you're the man. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to go. Home. I just want to go somewhere and do drugs. You know, it's not like. No I'm kidding. No, you're not. <laughs> no, you're not, man. Sober January. <laughs> That's so handy. <laughs> That's so sober January. It's it's dry January because I still smoke weed. Right. Unless you're leafing a girl. Ain't so dry then. Mm-hmm. I don't like that that I did those some of those things. Sometimes I say some things like just to like as a character to be like a little like someone who would say that stuff, but then I really said it. I don't think you've ever been that guy. Were you? Like in high school to Never. girls ever? Never. That's Even- why it's funny now because like it's so such a 
an unbelievable character to me. Even in one of your wet dreams, if Lindsay Lohan's there and you're on her Copacabana Beach Club. <laughs> Copacabana? Did we talk about that? She, Lindsay Lohan used to host a show called Lindsay Lohan's Beach. Oh, yeah. Beach House in... Uh, We're short-lived. Where was po- that? Was Pocon- on. Poconos or Boconos? Where is it? The Poconos? Poconos. Is that a place? Yeah, it, it, uh, it's the it's, uh, it's upstate a, New York. No, no, no. It's like a an exotic Caribbean resort. Oh, I was thinking of the Poconos. Mik- Mykonos. That's Greek. Oh. The yogurt? Yeah. So, so she had a beach club on a yogurt island. <laughs> In my college, there was a Greek, Greek restaurant called Poconos. Mykonos. With the euros. Anyway, she hosted, she was like... She had a staff. It was like it was a reality show, and she was like, "All right, guys, your activity today is to make lunch for these rich fucking sluts." They're like, "You're rich, you slut." Yeah, and then she was like, "True, I'm getting fucked up. I'll be back in ten minutes. You better have tuna tartare laid out for these people." Um, can we also just just check in? And if we say it, we say because it it's part of our vernacular. But whenever we refer to women as sluts, I do think it is kind of conditioning little girls and boys to think. Oh that, yeah, bleep that out. I, I, no, I we're say keeping it, it in. I say it as a joke, but I don't like. It. I, I just think that I think that if a woman uh, wants to sleep with a lot of people, oh, yeah. that doesn't make her a slut. Fuck no. Everybody's dude. a slut. No, dude. Well, women are the best. What? I think I think do whatever, truly do whatever you want if it's not hurting anybody. You know what I say? And or I, yourself. I said it today, and I really like this. I really like this. Yeah. If you're not getting in somebody else's way, if you're not hurting somebody else. If it makes you feel good and you want it, maybe it's good to do it. Okay. I think there are some loopholes. It's it's not a hard rule, but like 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 okay, it's not a, it's not affecting anyone negatively. Wait, 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 say it again? If 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 something makes you feel good and you also want to do it, right? If there's something that you want to do and the outcome of that thing you want to do will make you feel good and it doesn't hurt anybody, then then that's a that's that's a pretty good first step into considering doing that thing i want wendy's when i go home and well then you have to ask is it hurting anybody it's not good for you but if it makes you feel good and also if it makes you feel good it doesn't mean in the moment i often like to think how will i feel once whatever this thing is for me wears off if that means something i eat it doesn't mean five minutes later it means the next day will i be happy i did this tomorrow right if you'll be happy that you did it and it makes you feel good and it doesn't hurt anybody like i don't know if i should do this do i want to go out tonight do you want to? I don't know. Well, will it make you feel good? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Let that persuade you. You sound a lot like this motivational speaker I had in high school who would get up there and go, here are my three things I want you guys to always remember and abide by, okay? Uh, don't take no for an answer, okay? And by that I mean, if people tell you you can't do something, you look them right in the eyes and you go, I can do it. I want to do it. I'm going to do it, okay? I'm not taking your no. I'm going to take your no, actually, and I'm going to raise you a yes. Do it if it feels good, okay? That means, hey, if you're doing something and you're passionate about it and you love it and you love the way you're feeling about what you're doing and why you're doing it, hey, keep doing it, man. Do it if it feels good. Number three, get sweaty. Get in there. Get active. Get moving. Work up a sweat because that's how you know you're achieving and striving towards something worth making uh, time for, okay? So to review, don't take no for an answer. <laughs> okay, you're doing an it, impression. I guess you are. And that guy was Scott Peterson. Yeah, and we were all in high school. We're like, dude, this is like you're breaking down the one, two, three for sexual assault. Do it if it feels good. Get sweaty. I did. I, I went no home. For- I went home to Cleveland to teach my. They asked me to teach my high school. They did this thing before Thanksgiving, um, where the week before Thanksgiving, or like Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday or whatever, right? They did a thing for kids don't have to go to school, but if they do, the school is they're doing a special thing. So for eight hours, all 9th through 12th grade, they're all in class, and you could specialty things. I don't, I don't remember what they were, but one move, of... Move it. You've been one, fucking yeah. just teetering on that thing. Yeah. One of them was uh, comedy. So like, do you want to teach comedy? And I'm like, yeah, sure. And I had Brent, and Brent came home with me. I remember this. And we went and we taught comedy. But it was awesome. It was fantastic. The first day we were at school the whole day, and then the second day... Uh, we went down to the Cleveland Improv, and everyone got to go up on stage and do stand up. Whoa! Oh, wow. Yeah, I th- let's cut to a clip. I was teaching a two day comedy class. <laughs> oh, it was. I get you're teaching it. Taking. Eight. Wow. Okay. Okay. I and I uh, I remember there was we were talking about stuff because people are very scared, you know, like. They're not just scared about doing stand-up the next day. They're also in a classroom with people in grades above them, below them, people they don't know that well, people they maybe have crushes on. You know, it's just like this thing. Don't they say public speaking is the most terrifying thing in the world? To some people, yeah, yeah I've yeah. heard that. But like, Well, here's the thing with stand-up. I think is there's two things. It's like there's stage fright and then there's right. fear of, there's fright you fright. know, like I, I, you can get up on and sing karaoke. 
you know, you don't care about getting on stage. It's like, but then if you have to like, right? There's two That's, different fears. There's booze involved in that, so that takes away the stage fright. True. No. Yeah, well, I also think that un, Some also, won't even also on, on a bigger scale, you're looking at performing as a comedian versus performing as a musician. And as a comedian, you're showing your not to take not to say that there isn't there's obviously tons of vulnerability in a musician, but a musician is, is is you're able to practice that on your own. You're able to do your performances alone. If you need to, you could retreat within yourself. A comedian, you can't practice mm. what it's like by yourself because it, there is so much involved there. So you are asking something of somebody more as a comic than you are as a musician. You are asking them to like me. Right. Not just like the thing I'm, I'm making, but to like me. Right. You could not like a song with Love the Musician. Mm. If you like the comedian, you'll like anything they do. Great. So yeah, there's this fear of not being liked or, or validated or respected or understood or wanted or whatever it is that is you're going, making you get up there. So we're talking about this and I do remember there was one thing where somebody, where I don't remember how the analogy came out, but it was something to like not taking no for an answer. And I was like giving an example of just like, even if it's maybe like yourself telling yourself no and like question it and figure out why and you know like stuff that I th was like going down a good place and and I was trying to give an example of like I don't know what is high school like let's say if a girl asks you out in my head I'm thinking like you know the girl saying no to you not because she doesn't want you but from this one which is also obviously part of it but another point which was more that when a kid thinks that oh she doesn't I'm I'm a loser that's why she's saying no like I'm not good enough um, I'm not good looking enough I'm not cool enough whatever the thing might be so if the girl says no it doesn't mean that you're not worthy but the way I was accidentally doing it was not taking no if she says no you just you know you figure out a way to explain to her why she does want you and I and wow and I was thinking of it in a way for like comedy if the audience things aren't working or if, it's basically coming from a place of accepting yourself. And if, if the reason she doesn't want you, you disagree with, that has nothing to do with you. Yeah. But I was accidentally saying, like, telling, don't take no for an answer. If a girl doesn't want to go out with you, you just keep asking. And just fuck, and like, and Brent's like, whoa, whoa, Rick, Rick, Rick. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, it was yeah. funny. But I was like, that made me think of that. Like, no, you absolutely need to take no for an answer. How old were these kids? Ninth or 12th grade. Oh, that ain't bad. Impressionable. They're all fucking non virgins, probably. I mean, meaning, like, you know, you're in that. I don't know. You're not a kid. To That's a kid. To misconstrue what... The high fucking seniors in high school? They're ninth, fucking... You know? Ninth to 12th grade. I didn't have sex until June of... Uh, Last year. The, we'll be right back. <laughs> that was good. Thanks. Real good. I didn't have sex to, to, to uh, a month before I graduated high school. Yeah, but you're fucking still in 12th grade. Yeah, but this was Thanksgiving. This was six months before I had sex. But you're wow, still in 12th a, grade. The The... the, the, the parameters of they're still in that but having sex is even a, a worse time to not take no for an answer those people need to take no for an answer did you share that your escapades at thanksgiving what do you mean i don't know like, that's a six months prior to thanksgiving everyone's telling tales did you bring it up unprovoked what that hey can someone press the pass the mashed potatoes my arms are a little weak from all the fucking i've been doing oh you're saying thanksgiving why well, had sex in june so six months later Five months later. Right. So did you bring it up at Thanksgiving? So you're asking, right. So you just got out, you're a junior when yeah. you had sex. No, 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 no. I was a, I was a senior. We graduated high school in June. I had sex in June. Weeks Semantics. before graduating high school. No, Thanks it's a whole year. Thanksgiving is in November. Right. So the following Thanksgiving. Great. So now this is my first Thanksgiving where I'm no longer a virgin. That's what I'm saying. Did it oh. come up? I would feel like you oh, would celebrate that. Oh, you said it was a June that. before your senior year. Never mind, go. I would think that maybe your grandma would be like, so, Ricky, where's your, where's your wiener been these last... Well, I think they knew I had sex because I had a girlfriend at that point. You have a very, um, very open family, too. Yeah, that's what I'm asking. But you guys like joking around and shit? Yeah, that would come up. My family was like really quiet. I hey, I Pat, send the yams to the virgin over there on table four. Hey, grandma. Finally, they finally fucked. Yeah. I guess that was me. Yeah. No, no, that was the grandpa. <laughs> hey, he finally fucked. You hear this? Isn't it cool when somebody else hypes you up like that so you don't have to say it? So like, instead of being like, no, I fucked. Instead of the grandpa does it, you get to do this. Huh, whatever. He probably didn't fuck. <laughs> hey, pass it to Captain Release over here. Give him a second on turkey. He needs some tryptophan. He's tired. What was the fr when was the first time you came with, a, with another person? Freshman year, no, probably sophomore year. Freshman what, year, maybe. What what made it? What made it, you release <sighs> the handy? Is that why they call you Handy Cozell? Yep. Handy, 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 handy. Oh my God, was a fucking hardware store in Illinois, 
and it would all have these commercials. Can you you can actually play that on YouTube? Like Andy Andy, and it's a guy with like a fucking beard, like a, a cartoon guy with a red beard. He's going, oh, we'll Andy up, Andy. We'll put up for B roll. Sing it though, because I don't want to get flagged. I don't know if that was a theme song, but he's like, it's Andy Andy, and like so everyone would call me Andy Andy because that, that was dude, it was they were on the bus stops. That's the show, dude. It's your it's a it's a new uh, home improvement. You're Handy Andy. You work at a hardware store. It's a single camera comedy like The Office. It's Handy Andy. Would you get trademarked though? It's not. It's it's out of business now. Great. Well, that's maybe maybe for you, but not for them. That's a business. People don't really empathize. We can with what buy the rights. <laughs> what I'm saying is, it's a family business. It's out of business now. We'll buy the family. <laughs> But then there'll be a lot of buzz being like, oh, that was, I'm going to watch it because that was a thing. Yes. Who's, who's better at prank calls between the two of you? I hate pranks. Been doing it since I was fucking, I don't know, nine. Prank calling sports radio stations, prank calling sex hotlines. Remember when Jerky Boys came out? That was so huge. Uh, incredible. I was obsessed <laughs> with it. Everyone had like a little, they were like mixtapes. I would call Seattle sports radio stations four times in a night, back to back to back sometimes, and they would put me through. And this is when I was 10 like, and 11. Like what an asshole kid, fucking stealing toys. Oh, yeah. I'd be like, I'd be like, I think, hey, I think we should trade Ken Griffey Jr. for some Cracker Jacks. And then call right back and be like, uh, yeah, um, so I was at the game tonight and I noticed that the Jumbotron does not feature people uh, with weird lip soles. Another, another <laughs> racist. Thing. But they kept answering? Oh, yeah, because I would call and they Hello. Just, <laughs> He's like, yes. Here's me again. Uh, you know? Dude, yes. They would go, hi, who is it? I go, uh, Ethan from Tuck Willa. And they go, and what do you want to talk about? Um, you know, just how the man of defense has been uh, slacking as of late. And they go, all right, cool, we'll put you through. That wow. easy, dude. Send us some tapes. We'll put it in. I actually uh, converted them, but I don't know where they are. What if he really had just that reel of, like, the kids stealing the yeah. fucking voices? What a funny reel. Just I some would, shit from him being a kid. By the way, <laughs> I would... Just him being a kid. I would put them on a cassette tape and, so alt. and bring them on the bus on my and play them on my My First Sony for my buddies, and we would all just giggle. The way you said it, it's so alt made me think of... There's a video, and it's also speaking of Brady, who we were talking about earlier. Um, Shout out to Brady. Amazing artist. Uh, great dude. Yeah, we should uh, put Very up... A, if, does he have a, an Instagram for his art and stuff? It's, it's I think public. Brady, Brady Matthews Art, maybe? Uh, we'll Go to his regular page, Brady Matthews. And... Um, we did a uh, the Hollywood Improv. It was uh, it was at the lab before they changed it the way it is now. It was such a great it spot. It was great. I understand that they're doing they're redoing it to look like that again. They're changing. They're turning the ticket booth now into a bar that you could either reach from the outside or the inside. Cool. And then the stage where the bar is now back there. That's amazing. But this was an old. Yeah, they, I mean they're, they're totally not utilizing the space now. Yeah. The improv was such a. It was just so great when we were coming up you know so we're doing a show there and it was uh uh you know uh i was a very experimental as a as a younger comedian still uh, are yeah but relatively speaking it was like really big you know uh swings and stuff and there was one where um i was doing something i was reading from a notebook and i was doing a thing and brady sounds it, hilarious and brady uh, turns the music uh, has the dj like turn the music on to interrupt me because like we're fucking around with each other playing but I didn't want him to do that because I was trying something. Like I, I get, it. I just like I want to do this stuff. So I said, don't, just don't do them. Don't keep turning the music on. Let me just do. I want to do my thing, and he kept doing it. So in my head, two things are happening. One, I didn't want that. That's the truth. That's right. what I'm playing on. But two, I also know and have already accepted. This is what this set is. This is the world. So now this is the game, gotcha. right? So I used that. I didn't want him to play the music as inspiration, but it's fine, whatever. But I made the choice of how mad I was. And I said, could you just please shut the fuck up? Stop playing the fucking music. I'm just trying something. And so Brady, who, who knows I'm joking. Oh, sorry. You know, sorry. And I go, it's all right, man. And this goes back. And then to the point to where he now realizes I'm not joking and I'm very mad. Mm. Now I'm not, but... And I didn't realize he didn't know that I wasn't. But he is doing this. And then I flip out and I take the stool and I throw it across the stage. And I just say, could you shut the fuck up? I'm trying to do something. And I put it on YouTube years ago. And it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's got over a million views. And it's got like half thumbs up, half thumbs down. People say, I shouldn't be too doing comedy. I'm too thin skinned versus the people that are like, no, that's funny because of blah, 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 blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it's that video uh, I might repost in here. Don't, you know what? Maybe I'm doing something on purpose. Maybe I'm setting up a fucking situation and you're not helping me. I get the count you're doing, but turn the music off and let me do what I'm fucking doing. I'm quite that question. Yeah. <laughs> 
I'm, I'm being serious. Do me a favor. Quick, turn the music off. Okay, alright, I was forgetting. Why? Did you tell him to do Is that why it's funny? You have a question for me in the middle no, of my just, fucking act? No, I There's really no. Everything had an order what I was doing, and there's no recovery for it. So why don't you indulge the audience and tell me what your question was, you fucking dick? See you, I, I, see you I, I, I said a question. Go a ahead, ask your question. How's, how's your night? It's, it was great. I had stuff in order. And guess what? I knew when I said the, uh, I went to summer camp. Oh no, it was regular camp. I did that on purpose, dude. So, so old. So old. <laughs> Shit pissed me off. Let me do my fucking act. How many blinds does it take to screw like this? <laughs> it's just, Andy's there. And I just, I throw the stool and you just hear, uh, you just, people are going, oh, whatever. And then, and you hear the stool hitting the thing and I'm yelling and you just hear Andy go, so old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anyway, funny. I don't see Brady for, for weeks and I see him again and he's a little weird around me. And he was very uncomfortable at how much I yelled at him. And I had no, I, I was joking yeah. in well, my head. Yeah, but that's you. That's you, man. Not everyone's you don't really know. familiar. Well, that's, I mean, that's been a big if talking people point see on this, this clip, podcast. That is the most Rick set ever. Yeah. You right? Got, like, it's very. I don't run into those situations as much sport, anymore. But you're a good sport, so that's why you're a good sport. So it's like, you, you kind of got to know you're joking, but then you're like, I don't know, is he joking? The bad thing about Rick is, the one thing I fucking always hated, like, Rick will fuck with you, and then, like, he'll just, like, leave. You know, like, in, in human <laughs> human interaction, like, he would go, I'm just fuck with you, dude. Like, Rick will fuck with somebody, or, like, a stranger that he doesn't know, and then he'll just, like, fucking not tell him he's joking, just, like, leave, and then you're like. Who's that guy? I'm like, hey, I think he's joking. Like, you know, like. Well, we all have grown. Yeah, yeah, he'll just we take off. Up. We all grew up, Andy. You, you know, got to so, tell someone that I'm joking after, especially. Uh, there's a thing that I have inside of me that feels like if 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 I ever tell somebody I'm joking, and I this isn't this is an emotional feeling that I don't I no longer act on this way as I become aware of it. But when you tell somebody you're joking, it's like you're conceding and giving up. Also, like when somebody says when somebody does a joke and they go, "I'm joking," I'm going like, I, "I know, man." Yeah, yeah, that's low level shit. You're like a fucking guy that would like trip and throw water on a guy. That's your. And I've like, never, you and keep like, using that. I've never done that. And then Rick would get up and goes, <laughs> asshole, would, and would, he'd leave. I would never like, do Dude, something joking. to somebody else like that. I, I wasn't a prankster. <laughs> I don't punk people. I don't prank people. I'm silly. I may make them think something about me, but I would never do something. But I'm to saying your else. jokes are really are really heightened. But it's like I'm fucking like, hey man, nice pants, and they go, I'm joking. You know, you can do it when it's small like that. But you, you kind of like, it's like a whole, it's <laughs> I a whole, was like, what's wrong with these it's pants? It's a whole room <laughs> thing, you know. We're like, the guy's joking. People are like, oh, what the fuck? Is yeah, your but, goal to make head, people uncomfortable or get the or get the laugh? Or that's both. what I'm saying. Didn't we just talk about this on your podcast? Which, by the way, check out about last night. By the time this comes out, I just did an episode of Adam's podcast that just came out. It's fantastic. We didn't really cover it fully. I want to know how much when you're building the bit is to get the laugh. I always want people to reaction to, i always want people when i'm doing something i'm doing it for a reason and if it's stand up i'm doing it for a, yes a reaction usually a laugh and if not a laugh it's because it's setting up an energy to then get a laugh later right i always want people to enjoy what i'm doing but by design either at first because i hadn't quite figured it out and now where it's like sometimes you have to play with energies yeah <laughs> you're gonna get people who don't get it okay and i and i'm okay with that but I don't want people to think I'm not being weird just to be weird. I don't want people to walk away unhappy and uncomfortable. I want people to walk away to think, wow, Rick's good at what he does. You don't want comics to go, I can't believe he used his spot for that. No. Well, with the, with the chair throwing, you can't say, you can't say I'm joking because it'll ruin the whole thing. Exactly. And also that, that, that set was ruined. There's, it's just in the lab. There's not that many people here. I'm trying to do a thing. Some, another comic, which I understand we all do stuff. There's nothing wrong with it. It's playing music. They're making choices. And it's just like, ah, this isn't going anywhere. So in my head, to turn it into something, it's here's something that is so low stakes. Mm. It's just funny to play super, to me, I mean, just <laughs> forget funny. It's just a choice okay. in a low stakes situation to, to take something so seriously. Yes. So then I throw the stool, like, why does he care so much? And then I end up going back to the microphone and finishing the joke, which is just a... Uh, um, I don't remember, like, how, how many blondes does it take to screw in a light bulb? Or something obviously so shitty, hacky, simple. That's funny. So it's just like, that's my way of trying to t turn something that was nothing into something. Because you're so insane about telling this fucking joke, and then it comes out to being, like, the worst joke ever. Yeah, imagine, like, it's just yeah, you're setting this thing up, and because I couldn't... You're just setting something up, and then it's just like... 
<laughs> you know, it's, it's it's not funny, but it's a it's uh. You want people to be like, that's what it was for. Yeah, and, and it's and also it's also that's my way of after throwing the stool and being so angry and really yelling and really being angry to let them know, oh, he's joking. That's my, instead of saying, I'm just joking, I'm True. angry, and then I go, first base. You know, it's just a punchline. Yeah. Well, saying I'm, I'm just joking, yeah, like you said, you can just do a face or like an eyes But or saying it is, is, yeah, I'm not, I'm is, not, is leaving, it's giving up. I wasn't up. just talking about saying it, like you can still be like. But people still didn't know. Want to hear a joke my niece told me that I thought was really funny while I was high? Could you get her on the phone to tell it? <clears throat> Like if you, sorry, <clears throat> yes is what I should have said. <clears throat> what were you gonna say, Andy? Like if you threw, fell and threw water on somebody, and you, and you, and you, <laughs> like, only and you, and you look back and you go, like yeah, Danny but, knows you're joking. But that's the thing. If I throw water on you when I say I'm joking, no, I still did it. <laughs> it's like if I punched you and said just kidding. <laughs> hey Bree. What? Hey, it's Uncle Adam. Hi. <clears throat> hey, she doesn't how are have you? your number saved. Good. How are you? Good. I miss you. <laughs> What are you doing today? Um, I'm just laying down watching stuff. What do you watch? Are you watching some anime stuff? Um, yeah. <laughs> you love anime. Does she like Dragon Ball Z? Do you like Dragon Ball Z? I haven't watched that yet. Oh, is oh, that that's like a blanketed statement? Is that like a who? Who are your favorite characters right now? I don't want to be mean, but um, right now, <laughs> yeah, just, just kids. You know, they're Reno Kumura from uh, Blue Exorcist. That sounds crazy, Brie. I can't believe what is that? I don't know this stuff. I said from Blue Exorcist. I know. I don't know what that is. It's Blue Exorcist is an anime show. Oh, okay. Um, Brie, I'm on my friend's podcast, and I was telling him about the joke you told me um, that made me laugh really hard. And uh, and I posted a video of it, and, remember, and people thought, because you had taken melatonin, so you were really like kind of out of it when you told me the joke. Do you remember that? I don't remember the joke. It was, okay, it was, I'm going to set you up. It was... Why Why was six afraid of seven? Will you tell that joke? Oh, because seven, eight, nine. What if you're like, how old is she? He goes, a senior. <laughs> <laughs> that joke's really funny. You should watch Dragon Ball Z. It's great. Okay. Bye, Brady's that, art. That was my friend, that was my friend Rick. Okay. Br Brie, um, what, uh, what are you going to do tomorrow? Tomorrow? Actually, oh, how about no. this? How about this? What have you eaten for lunch today? <laughs> That's a good one. Um, I forgot. What's first I don't base, Brie? I think I ate breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't say what second. All right, Brie, I love you. I'll call you, you later, okay? Second. I didn't it's, say what second. At most, okay, it's I love you, heavy petting. Okay. <laughs> what if she goes heavy petting? Bye, Brie. <laughs> Bye. Who goes first base? Heavy petting? Can I go? I don't even know what I had for lunch. We should almost Yikes. get a soundbite of her just saying heavy petting. <laughs> just clip that in there. I have a joke. I have a fucking 12. You guys are just <laughs> monsters. What are you talking about? Asking, my, my asking a twelve-year-old what first base is. Asked. She can't hear us. Yeah, she can, is that hooked up. And also, by the way, the problem is that twelve-year-olds aren't taught what first base is properly. What is twelve? Eighth grade? Yes. Twelfth, uh, sixth grade, sixth, seventh grade. Oh yeah, that was. I mean, they're doing more than you think. Dude. No, Andy, you just came from a place that was just yeah, getting dude. That was jerked off. That was coke. That was creepy uncle shit right there, dude. C U S, dude. But like, she not, but not the actual uncle. That you were like the uncle's friend, the cousin. C U S. Yeah. She can't hear us. Yeah, you're the creepy uncle friend. Yeah, but, but does that make it worse? You said it into a mic to a kid that couldn't hear you? No, I think I think that he didn't say anything dirty. He said, like, what's first base? It's yeah. a callback, and first base is fine, and she knows what first base is probably oh, better than us, and I think that's okay. I get what you're saying. Well, first base is like but, truth or dare. But he know? didn't say... I guess I just take... Uh, and I understand. Yeah, yeah. I understand on, on a lot of levels. It's okay. Um, but I, I think to defend Andy Will here... you call her back and apologize? <laughs> What, she's she like, hears? what do you mean? I didn't hear. I didn't hear. He goes, but what he said was, and, he, and that's even more creepier. That's yeah, why, that's, yeah, that's, that's why. That's that makes me think of. It. That makes me think of when I'm in a gym with headphones on and I fart and I'm next to somebody. I don't think they heard me, but I don't know how loud it was. But if I say excuse me, I'm I'm telling True, them. Yeah. So do you say excuse? So what I just do is I'll look and go, and maybe they just think I'm like, yeah, working out's hard. But if they heard the fart, they know I'm acknowledging the fart. People Stimulants. are probably people are farting a lot when they're working out, and probably just. Uh, I mean, that's more so on a plane or in a gym. Great question. Andy? Thanks. I don't like the way people just do it brazenly like that. Like even if I had to do it at the gym, I would kind of go somewhere where there's no people. Some people just like just do I'll, it. That's I, respectful. When I'm on a plane, I, I'm not I. I when I have to fart, I might as well be sitting on a toilet. Oh, you're not sitting like this on a plane, are you? Because if you're farting like this with your legs spread like that, I do not. You might be a redneck. I'm sorry. What were you gonna say? <laughs> if you're <laughs> sitting in the middle seat, See, on you, you could just do that. <laughs> you can just do it if you are. 
um, on a plane, you just let them let them rip, huh? I let them rip, dude, because and and they always make me laugh. I fart and I laugh, and They're some probably so bad. they usually never smell just because of filtration. But there was one that recently that I farted and it smelled so bad that after I smelt it, I waited ten seconds. So I so other people smelt it when I smelt it, and I go like this. <laughs> I'm like looking around. Yeah. I like to say the come on. Come on. <laughs> you know? Wait, or do this. Where you go, what the fuck? Because then you make eyes with other people. You go, and I feel like I'm the one to go like, say something. I'm like, come on. You know, because it's always someone in front of you shooting it back. But what about whoever smelt the Delta? <laughs> whoever did not, it supplied it. It's kind of like the, uh, the the early bird gets the worm. Yeah, the early worm gets eaten by the bird. Yeah. If you want to wake up early as a bird, I get it. But as a worm, stay in. Maybe the bird farted on the worm's house. <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> Tom Selleck. Yeah. <laughs> I have a joke uh, that was uh, yeah. that is uh, why is seven afraid of eight? Because hmm? eight, nine, ten. <laughs> I used to do that all the time. I forgot about that joke. <coughs> People are always be like, no, it's, it's six afraid of seven. I go, that's a different joke, guy. Do you remember the Yo Mama Snaps books? Yo Mama, Yo yeah. Mama, so yeah. Did you I remember any? the books, yeah, because Spencer's, we would go, my friend worked there. We Whose voice go. is that? Do you have a bubble in your throat? Oh, uh, yeah. I, 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 whenever I, have a bu- <laughs> I remember that. When I have a bubble, I kind of like to keep it going. Yes, See how I, like, know, I know, I know. Because it like, doesn't, you know. Dude, you're up. You're, it's you're, like when you when you gleek, somebody go, oh, I gleeked. But I mean, you, can't, you can't do it. You can't try, do it when you try. But when it comes out, you're like, oh, my God, I haven't so, done that in a long time. I don't know why gleek has always sounded like it's almost a bad word. But yeah. it always feels like, oh. Yeah, it's. I always thought Ben Gleek it was Ben Gleek before I met him. I always thought presidential candidate. Uh, yeah. uh, no, that's Ben Gleek. Gleek. I have a clip <laughs> uh, of of me that's really funny. Uh, uh, on uh, his uh, talk, sh- uh, did you guys ever do it? Did you ever do? Send me the link. idiot test. Yeah. Did you? Brad, do you have a clip? Brad and I. Yeah, Brad and I did the uh, um, celebrity charity edition. Yeah. Same. Well, that, yeah. Celebrities, you know. I was just on Dude, it. Trust me. I know, me too. I was just on it as a contestant. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever really do it? No. Uh, oh, just kidding. Just kidding. Yeah. It's like, you don't have to say it. It was a good game show. Um, I think Ben did like 500 episodes. Maybe we'll cut to a clip. Rick, Rick, Rick. Here's how it works, my friend. You and your partner, David Finn, who is backstage and cannot hear us, will have a combined 40 seconds to answer the exact same test. Whenever you lock in and stop the clock, whatever time is remaining is all that your partner will have left to answer. If only one of you gets it right, you get out of $1,000. But if you both get it right, your charities get $100,000. $10,000. $10,000! Um, Andrew Santino does the best Ben Gleave yeah. impersonation ever. Oh, that's right. I remember he did that years ago. Uh, yeah, it's really, it's, really it's like, good. It's like better than Ben Glee. <laughs> I, I drink a strap. Yeah, maybe I can call him. He can do it for us. Oh, he's probably on stage right now. He's in D.C. We don't know. <laughs> he's like, he is. I saw him post a story today. It. All right. I mean, he's, he's doing this uh, the, the Warner Theater in D.C. Fuck. You made it. 55 uh, of the best Yo Mama jokes of all time. You ready? I know them all. Yo Mama's so fat when she fell, I didn't laugh, but the sidewalk cracked up. Ooh, do some say, say some setups and let us do let us come up with punchlines. I love this. Your mama's so fat when she skips a meal. She skips around the meal. No, that's another one. <laughs> <laughs> <It's like, laughs> <"Mostly, laughs> okay, okay, that was yours. And the actual joke is your mama's so fat when she skips a meal, the stock market drops. Ooh. Rick, here we go. Yeah. Your mama's so fat it took me two buses and a train. Uh, uh just to fit her for a dress. <laughs> to get to her good side. Same thing. Yep. Andy, your mama's so fat when she goes camping. She goes camping. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm good with the cadence. It. Now we got it. The first base. The bears hide their food. <laughs> when she goes camping. She goes camping. <laughs> yeah, it's great. It works. People yeah. still laugh. It's perfect. <laughs> cadence is big. There was a guy who used to host Pachanga um, at the Temecula shows, and he was he would host for five minutes before he brought up the uh, feature act, and he would always just go, all right, where's everybody from? Where's everybody from? His name was Leonard, real smooth guy, big guy in a suit. He'd go, where's everybody from? Hey, who's married? Who's married? Yeah? Oh, good luck with that. <laughs> and that would get a laugh, and yeah. that, would be, that would be his five minutes. No jokes, just like cadence and like delivery, like, all right, and uh, who's single? Single, yeah. And how long have you been single? Five years. Oh, uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh oh! Yeah, <laughs> always got laughs. Yeah. Five years. Yeah, how about another five more? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. 
Yeah. Your mom is so fat, Rick. If she buys a fur coat, a whole species will go extinct. I mean, come on. Yeah. You give me these ones. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, no, no, go extinct. <laughs> your mom is so fat when she wears high heels. Andy. She puts on one, she puts on two, <laughs> she even. puts on three. You know, it's like that shit. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, but that doesn't make sense. Yeah, it doesn't make I'm just doing it. I'll, I got one. I got one. Uh, uh, well, she one, strikes oil. Wow. Is that it? Is it yes. oil? Yes. She strikes oil. Yo, mama's so fat she was overthrown by a small militia militia group. True. <laughs> and now that she's, was good. And now she's known as the Republic of Yo Mama. That's not a. That's, yeah, that's a real that, joke here. Well, that's a too long. That's also it's not a thing. Like even something that short would lose attention span. Yeah, that's somebody, you know who that is. That's that's the younger brother of the three brothers who are writing the book that really wanted to be included, so they let him put one in. Your mama tells so many long stories. That's something she would tell. Ooh, ooh. Go ahead, ask another one. <laughs> Your mama's so stupid she thought a quarterback uh, was a halfback. Was uh, uh, does it have something to do with ribs? I don't know. Was a refund. Mm. That's Wait, funny. that's fat or stupid? Quarterback. Stupid. Oh, I, I, you know what? That's kind of like Jeopardy. When you're getting like your categories, I was still thinking the subject was Mama's So yeah. Fat. I love on Jeopardy. Your Mama's So Fat. She's stupid. <laughs> I love on Jeopardy when they get something wrong like that and then they cut to them, the contestants, and you can see they're going, I thought it was done. You know? That's like when you miss. <laughs> yeah. a, that's like when you miss well, a you shot can, in basketball. You, ca- you catch it sometimes. Yes. Oh yeah, I love. You that. miss a shot in basketball, and in case anyone's looking, you go like this. <sighs> yeah. You act oh. like your hand hurts. How about this? Your Mama's So Stupid. When I said drinks on the house, uh, she put them on the roof. She got a ladder. Yeah. Andy, your mom is so stupid, it takes her two hours. To make minute rice. To watch 60 Minutes, yeah. Your mom is so ugly, Rick, she threw a boomerang. And it wouldn't come back. You got it. Andy, These your mom easy. is so old, her, secure, her social, social security number is one, one or something yeah. like that. Andy, your mom is so old, she walked out of a museum. And saw Jesus. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, and, and the security guards put her back in the, yeah, in the yeah. kennel. And, or the alar- and the alarm went off. <laughs> okay. uh, your mom is so ugly, she looked out the window. Saw a reflection of her face in the mirror and got real depressed. You got it. <laughs> no, come on, what is it? Oh. Uh, was arrested for mooning. Your mom was so ugly. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> your mom was so ugly when she goes into the bathroom in the mirror, she says her name three times. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> All right, hold on, Andy. Yeah. Yeah. Adam's got it. <laughs> your mom is so depressing. Blue singers come to visit her when they've got a writer's block. Jesus Christ. That's not even. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm going to do another one. Uh, your mom is so stupid. Uh, she took a ruler to bed. Oh, I just heard this one. Really? Weirdly. Um, to see how... To, to uh, count sheep? No, her, uh, her, her sleep patterns? No. <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> I fucking to, heard to this To measure her, her husband's cock? <laughs> <laughs> you got it. What is it? To see how long she slept. Yeah. Your, mo- your mom is so fat, her blood type... It's ragu. ragu. I have heard that's that one. That's my favorite one of all time. <laughs> I have heard that one. In fact, I love that. In fact, you said that on the, the one uh, with, with Brent. Your mom is so fat, her blood type's ragu. Yeah. Oh, your mom's good. so fat, I wouldn't fuck her at all. Oh. That kid was very dark yeah, on the that bus kid when I was a kid. Hard in the pain. What's wrong with a dark kid? Okay. Your mom is so uh, fat. Uh, if she, um, she, uh, she can't even jump, she weighs too much. Her belt size is equator. Because it'll cause an earthquake or something <laughs> stupid. Your mom is so fat. She brought a spoon to a knife fight. Is it stupid or fat? Fat. She brought a spoon to. Um, come on, come Passover Seder. I'm the family in the crowd watching on the game show. This is Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Come on, come on, come on. Um, come on. Could you please give us? Uh, I would like to use my hint. Okay, we're gonna go to uh, we're gonna go fifty fifty and pull the audience here, and we're gonna get Jonathan Sanders on the phone. Your fifth grade elementary school. He put English all teacher. the lifelines in one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just a hint <laughs> uh, because it's not well, all the, all the our hints are now a spoon to a uh, to a wine tasting. Final answer? Yes. <laughs> oh. Did you just release? <laughs> <laughs> they cut him in the crowd. <clears throat> Bring a spoon too. Your mama's so f- Oh, I'm so sorry, Rick. The answer was, your mama's so fat, she brought a spoon to the Super Bowl. Oh, because it's a big ass bowl. Yeah. yeah. All right, ask for more. I want to get, I guess, another one. Great. Yo mama. This is fun. I love riddles, and these aren't riddles, but they're still, it's still structure-based, you know? Mm-hmm. So you could like figure out what they're trying to turn. Uh, yo mama. Fun. I'm enjoying it. Huh? <laughs> really am. It's a fun game. Yo mama's so stupid, she got locked in a mattress store. I mean, that's just, that's, yeah, that's stupid. <laughs> and slept on the floor. Andy, yo mama's so fat, she makes Godzilla. Look like King Kong. <laughs> <laughs> yo ma- Rick, your mama's so fat, she uses Google Earth. 
Oh, okay. Mom's so fast. Big Google Earth. Let's see here. Uh, to to uh, to to check her makeup. What? To take a selfie. Same thing. That's the same thing. Yeah, there's to take very, a look at herself. Yeah. Very, 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 very. Andy, your mom was so old. She knew Burger King. Before he was famous. <laughs> Before he was a prince, yeah. But yours is way Before funnier. he was a prince. Yeah. Uh, little punch up. Rick, little punch up. Rick, your mom was so poor when I jumped in a puddle, she said. Uh, bath time. Yeah, what are you doing in my bathtub? Oh, wow. Uh, uh, can you keep your hands off the couch? Rick, your mom was so fat when God said, let there be light. She, she uh, turned on the lights? That's so old. Uh, yeah, you want so fat? She let their, oh, she got out of the. She moved out of the. She, or the sun? She was in eclipse or something. Yeah, you, yeah, you got it. She got out of the way. She was blocking the sun with her fat. Or ass. if she's so old, he said, "Let there be light," and she opened the curtains. Yeah. Andy, your mom was so fat when she sat on an iPhone. Uh, she made it a. She yes. made it yes. a, a uh, yes. razor flip phone. No. Oh. <laughs> I fart. Close. <laughs> what? what she made it an iPad. Oh. oh. Andy, uh, your mom was so stupid. She returned a donut. You know, what if people really insulted people in that kins? You know, it's actually funny you bring that up. Because um, your mom was so stupid <laughs> that she returned a donut to a farm factory. What a fucking idiot. Wait, she returned a donut uh, because it, it had a hole? You got it. Andy, your mom really? is so ugly. Yep. Andy, your mom is so ugly, people dress up as her. Obviously. For, for New Year's. No, nope, for Purim. Andy, your mom is so fat, when she crossed the road, people mistook her. People go the other way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Wait, no, what is it? For, for a cement truck? <laughs> circle gets a square. Rick, your Baby, mom. they mistook her for what? Could you get you, keep your hand on the brown? Rick, your mom is so fat. What's the, the cross the street one? The chicken crossed the road. You said the mom's so fat that when she crossed the street, people said, hey, here comes that fat lady that was no, on the other side. No, you just read it. What was the answer? <laughs> Uh, your mom was so oh your mom was so fat when she crossed the road people mistook her for a roundabout I mean Oof. I think mine was better yeah, yeah so people far. move <laughs> just punching up uh, here we go your mama is so old Jurassic Park hadn't even happened yet oh cause she was born in the 80s <laughs> <laughs> Jurassic Park brings back memories mm. because uh, you're so old yeah. no? Andy your mama's so fat when when um Andy, your, Andy, Andy, your mama's teeth are so yellow when she smiles. When you put on sunglasses. People slow down. <clears throat> Ooh. Great answer, actually. What is it? She puts the uh, sun out of business. Mm, mine's better, I think. Rick, your mama's so poor. What did you say? Rick, your mama's so poor. Your mama's so poor. Ducks. That my mom's so poor that ducks uh, feed her bread? Yeah. Throw really? Her her. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Kind of kindergarten, though. Yeah. Andy, your mom was so fat she let um she left in high heels and came back. In flats. In flip flops. It's easy. Yeah. Um Flat. your back is an iPad. <laughs> Rick, your mom was so stupid she studied very little <laughs> for mm. a for a COVID test. <laughs> Ooh, that's a new that's a new, yeah, uh, this is a new up, one. A new one. Yeah, fresh hot take. Your mom was so fat. Wait, the top fifty five slams of all time has a COVID <laughs> one. Wow, that's weird. <laughs> Andy, your mama's so fat. Just don't make lists. Andy, your mama's so fat. A vampire sucked her blood and got COVID. <laughs> <laughs> got diabetes, yeah. Uh, and COVID. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Rick, your mama's head so big she dreams. Just you know, uh, in uh, in novels form in IMAX. Mm. I mean, the same same boat in, in volumes. <laughs> uh, All right, two more. All right, two more. Uh, Andy, your uh, your mom was so poor. When I saw her kicking a can down the street, I asked. Oh, I know this one. I asked her what she was doing, and she said, "Moving." Yeah, yeah I've heard that one. Um, but who lives in a can? I mean, it's kind of. It's not. She lives in the can. There's, she only has so much stuff that oh, she can put in a can. Yeah, She's got yeah, a couple yeah. like like guitar picks and like you yeah, know maybe yeah, some yeah, some yeah. coins. Um, be a rat. But why save a can? Yeah. Just because kick the can is a thing that people do. Do you know a buddy of mine once was chasing a stroller uh, that a man was screaming at going down a hill? Oh, and there was and no baby in it. You know, it was cans, and it was a homeless guy chasing was his he cans. Poor? And he was chasing the Can cans. You tell the story. It says a, go ahead. I want to tell it as a joke after you tell yeah, me this. My buddy's so so poor he was chasing it. down the <laughs> stroller filled with cans because my buddy thought there was a baby in it, and the man was screaming like it was a baby. And he got to it, and the homeless guy thought it, that my buddy was trying to steal his cans, so he tackled him to the ground. Cop showed up and, like, like put them both in cuffs for like fighting because he was like I'm trying to steal my baby my buddy was like 
this guy's fucking, I thought there were fucking, I thought there was a baby in there. There's just cans in there. He's obviously crazier than me. <clears throat> and that guy was. Bill Steve, Paxton. Thank you. Your mom was so ugly, Rick, like when she looks in the mirror. She's not happy with what she sees. Hmm? I like that. Oof. Very, very uh, 2000, very woke. But I'll uh, <coughs> say, say it again. Say it again. Watch this. Rick, your mom is so ugly when she looks in the mirror. She realizes that the reflection she sees is a projection of herself, and she's actually a beautiful person, and all she has to do is accept who she is to understand the beauty that we all see about her. Is that a song lyric? I mean, if you put a melody behind it. Sounds like a country song. <laughs> if you just look in the mirror, you will realize that your reflection is a projection of your own insecurities. So if you can see who you really are, like I see in me, if I could take away the mirrors and give you my eyes to see you the way I see you, you would know that you're beauty, 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 beauty. Reflection projections, reflection projections, reflection projections, reflection projections. Beauty is subjective, but love is objective. You find your way inside of understanding subjectives. Because if you love who you are, you can love who you be. And if you know how to love yourself, you can love you in the You love one another and beauty is a Reflection projection, is an idea. Reflection projection. You love one another, and you love one another. We will all be all right. Projection, projection, projection. That's good. Projection. Let's get it All right, Andy. What's your Instagram? Andy Kozel. Your mama's so Andy. Oh no, no, no. A N D Y K O Z E L. And Adam, what is Andy's co what's Andy's Instagram? Uh, y O K. <laughs> All right, you guys, check out about last night. I was just on Adam's podcast, and he also has uh, you know other a lot of other people that are great. And uh, check out uh, Andy's uh, at the party. <laughs> All right, I'm that guy that don't leave. You sound like Brent when you said that. Can you do a Brent? That was very Brent. Uh, let's see, let's see. Uh, oh my God, God! You know he does like that shit. Yeah. yeah, he does have a good comedy yell. He does really great. Mm-hmm. Oh my God! You know he does like that. Yeah. All right, guys. Did you know he could do impressions? <laughs> I thought I thought he could. No, I can't. Um, thank you guys for coming over. A lot uh, of fun. Some Great of my best right. friends. This is officially the best friends club. I'd love to have you guys back on either in this combination and or other combinations. But uh, I love having friends over to do this kind of shit. It felt really silly. Yeah. The whole time at the beginning, I'm like. Oh, there's a lot going at this, and I'm not sure, but we really found a pocket and a groove. We did. I feel like, yeah. I think the I think the thing is we have to let other people talk, and that's hard for. I think that's hard for all three of us. Your po your podcast is so great that you might be a redneck. There you go. Good night, everybody. Scoot do blabbery blue. Scoot.